and half of the cost in 2009 when prices peaked at 7 cents per kilowatt hour. The cost of installing wind turbines has declined and productivity has increased as the wind energy industry matures. Competition among companies like General Electric and Siemens has grown and manufacturing has become more efficient, according to Weiser. Longer blades generate more power and they're being used more wisely as the cost of production and installation goes down. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports New York prison officials are investigating allegations that guards beat and abused dozens of inmates in an upstate New York prison after the daring escape of two convicted killers in June. The Department of Corrections and Community Supervision said it had been investigating for several weeks the allegations of prisoner abuse at the Clinton Correctional Center, which were first reported in the New York Times on Tuesday. The Times reported prisoners left behind in the so-called honor section of the prison, reserved for inmates with good behavior, including including Richard Matt and David Sweat before their June 6th escape, described being beaten while handcuffed, choked, and slammed against cell bars and walls. The newspaper said it had reviewed letters and conducted prison interviews. Some said their privileges were revoked and personal possessions discarded. Patrick Alexander, alleged he was targeted for abuse because he was in a cell next to Matt, described being handcuffed and taken into a broom closet where three corrections officers, whom he had never seen before, beat and choked him while interrogating him about the escape. Two prison workers had been charged in the escape of Matt and Sweat, who broke through their cell walls, cut through steel pipes, and emerged through a manhole outside the prison walls. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After notifying students that there will be no awesome events happening on campus this weekend, Hamilton College Activity Board Coordinator Jessica Wilson from the Class of 2015 spoke to Onion reporters about the disappointingly empty days ahead. On behalf of the entire Campus Activities Board, I would like to truly apologize for failing to live up to the standards expected of us from everyone on campus. And the fact is, we let the school down. Wilson said that while the board is usually proficient at booking plenty of cool events for all students to participate in, the upcoming weekend will have no interesting lectures, no wrestling match against Amherst, no acoustic coffee house, and no outdoor movie screening of Silver Linings Playbook. We tried our best to organize a foam party in Dunham Quad for Friday night but all the phone machines were rented and we failed. This falls on us. We realize we don't deserve your trust yet, nor do we expect it, but we'll do everything we can to restore your confidence in us, starting with a comedy hypnotist show on Thursday at Minor Theater. Tickets are $5. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. Join us here on the radio waves to talk about whatever you would like to discuss. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Taryn Fee Lupo. And Mark. All right. And of course, you can join us via Skype. In fact, that's where we're going to go to open up the show. And then Taryn, you're going to tell us that nightclubs are dying off. They sure are. Which is uh, kind of a surprise to me. I mean, who, what human beings don't want to go and party at a young age? That seems to be the target demo of a nightclub. Uh, and I'm shocked by this. Uh, so we'll talk about that. But first, let's go to Drew. He is calling from Des Moines via Skype. Hello, Drew. Hey, uh, I just had a couple questions about Bitcoin. Sure. Uh, first off, uh, I tried to get some on ExpressCoin, but unfortunately, they don't sell Bitcoins to users in Iowa, so I had to go to another site. Really? Uh, no big, no big deal, I guess. They well, said, did they give you a reason uh, Iowa, for that? No, I was looking. Uh, I really couldn't find a reason. So let me just uh -oh. make sure I'm clear on something. You went to try to get a new digital currency, new as in the you know the like the time that money's been around. Bitcoin's only been around for six years, so I guess on the time frame of money, it's fairly new. Uh, and it's a digital currency. It's essentially created by no bank, no government was involved in its creation. 
and it's an amazing thing. We talk about it a lot here on Free Talk Live. Current price is around 270 US dollars per Bitcoin. You can uh, purchase less than a, a Bitcoin. It can, it's divisible by eight decimal points. And we talk about ExpressCoin.com as a place that one can go within the U.S. and Canada to purchase Bitcoin. You tried to buy through ExpressCoin.com, and was there like some sort of automated error that said you're in Iowa, so we can't sell you Bitcoin? Yeah, right on the buy page it says we don't accept orders from users in Iowa, and there was a couple other states. Wow, do you know why? So you have no idea why that is? Nope, I wasn't able to find it anywhere. Yeah, okay. I haven't heard that either. We'll have to reach out to uh, Will, the uh, proprietor there, and find out what uh, what has happened. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing there's some sort of regulation uh, that has been put in place in, in Iowa, but that's just complete speculation on my part. All right, I so, suspect that's exactly true, yeah. So what was your question? Well, um, first off, uh, I was talking to my dad today. We are having lunch, and I was just talking to him about Bitcoin, and he knew a little bit about it, but I di- I don't know as much as as I should to try to explain to him, kind of where the value of the Bitcoin comes from, where the inherent value comes from, and his big his big question is uh, what sort of security he has that no one's going to steal his bitcoins. Like he was saying, you know, if he if someone uh, was able to take all the money out of his checking account. Um, you know, the bank will reimburse him as long as he can prove that it was, you right. know, it's not like a criminal activity or These are whatever. good questions, and uh, the security issue is one of the reasons why Bitcoin is far and away the best currency on the planet. Um, it is unlike government money and the bank account or the banking system, it is impossible to authorize from a distance from someone else it's impossible for them to take money from your account. So, like when you give a uh, when you when you give a company your credit card information, they can use that information to take money from your credit card account, essentially. Without you know, even if you didn't authorize it, right? If they've got the right info, if they, they've got the number, they got the expiration, they got the three digits on the back, and uh, they can pretty much take as much as they want out of there. And yeah, there are chargebacks and there are you know fraud you know, ways to deal with that within the credit card system. But one of the things about Bitcoin is unless someone else has access to your private key, no one else can authorize money to come out of your account. Only the person with access to the private key of the Bitcoin account, your wallet, if you will, uh, only that person can authorize money to be sent from your account and then placed in the other person's account. So if you go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com, you'll see our Bitcoin page. And it has our Bitcoin address. That's a public key. We can give that public key out to anybody. And all that allows people to do is put money into our account. It does not allow them to authorize money to be withdrawn from our account. Does that make sense? You Essentially, the one of the big differences between yeah. Bitcoin and the traditional banking system is you, the account holder, are the only person who can move money out of your account and place it into someone else's account. No one else can do that outside of you. Unless you give yeah, them your I, private key, I, right? I yes, pretty much important. understands understand that. And I'm just trying to explain to him, and basically he's like, "Well, if hackers can break into the White House and steal all credit cards from credit card numbers from any business, how are they? How are you, how can you prevent a hacker from basically hacking into your wallet and, well, and I, basically sending the money out to their own wallet?" I think there's a a risk that sometimes gets forgotten about and that is the risk of the government or a bureaucratic agency or even the bank just seizing your money or locking it down i had some friends who uh who had a practice that got in trouble with the irs and even though he was found no charges were ever pressed nothing ever happened they just locked away his money away and there was no recourse the bank did not have it so you know um people forget that the Probably, I would think that the government ha- steals from people or locks down their money almost as much as criminals. Well, I can understand. I would concern. say that uh, more people had their money taken by the IRS without a refund given to them last year than had Bitcoin, um, you know, sort of hacked out of some kind of uh, third-party wallet. And that does happen. Sometimes people give up their passwords and that sort of thing, and uh, you know, that'll that'll happen. But I want to read you something, and this is to me was one of the most motivating things. I I don't know that much about computers and math and and that sort of thing, and mm-hmm. so I want to read this uh, this bit um, about uh, how. How secure Bitcoin is. 
Imagine you build a perfect computer. Forget about G hash and megahertz. You build a computer which used the absolute minimum amount of energy theoretically possible to change a single bit from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. We're talking about the limits of thermodynamics. Nothing more efficient is even possible. Now you use the most, um, most of the natural resources in our solar system to construct a computer that completely encircles the surface of the sun in a sphere, a single star system-sized computer. Now imagine you can keep this supercomputer cooled at roughly the absolute zero and could do so without expending any additional energy. If you had that and captured with no inefficiency or loss at all the entire energy output of our star, not just a day or a week, but continually until it burned out, you could not count from uh, 1 to 2 to the 256th before you ran out of energy. Keep in mind, this is simply counting. Just counting, not hashing, not comparing, not performing lookups. Just counting 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 2 to the 256th, um, minus 1 to the 256th. And so what they're saying is, is that the encryption on Bitcoin, this is trying to explain, uh, uh, what is it? What's the encryption called? Ha uh, I have no the idea. Blockchain? Yeah, hash 256 oh, or something right. like that um, is the type of encryption that goes around uh, Bitcoin. And what they're saying is, is that it is not possible for somebody to put a computer, as we understand computers today, to put a computer up against the kind of encryption that Bitcoin has. Yeah, but couldn't quantum computing break it? In theory, in theory, I mean, you know, when yeah. quantum computing comes around, then the um, security—it's called SHA-256. S H A SHA-256 okay. SHA yep. um, is the type of encryption. And once quantum computing comes around, they can upgrade the Bitcoin. the the Bitcoin's uh, encryption right. to whatever the quantum uh, encryption is. So at this point. Uh, the the walls of the castle are able to keep out the horde, the Mongol hordes um, of uh, the hackers if you use the right encryption. Okay, so um, that's interesting, Mark, but it talks about how the encryption is really great, and that's good. It's good to know that. But all the best encryption in the world isn't going to do you any good if you give away your private key to somebody, This isn't right? about private so, keys. The, the, his question was if hackers can hack, you know, whatever. Right, the hacker could, in theory, hack your private key. So if you don't protect your private key, you, all the encryption in the world isn't going to save you. You are the person, with it, when it comes to Bitcoin, unless you're entrusting your Bitcoin wallet and your private key to some third party, like, let's say, uh, blockchain.info, uh, then it's up to you to keep that safe. And if you just leave it laying around unencrypted on your hard drive, then in theory, someone could uh, break in there and access it and copy it. Um, so, But there are very simple things you can do to uh, protect yourself. And I want to thank you for the call tonight, uh, Drew. I appreciate it. We can talk more about the value of Bitcoin because he did ask about that too. Uh, that's all on the way here. And we'll try to get an answer on the, um, the restrictions in Iowa. It's Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Okay, honey, I have to ask, and be honest here, have you been taking a little blue pill? Because things have been pretty good in the bedroom lately. No, I swear. You didn't pick anything up at the pharmacy last month in Cancun? No. Well, something's different. I have been taking that heart and body extract you bought me. But that's for your heart and to control your cholesterol. Well, I read HB extract also promotes healthy prostate function. I never guessed it would work this well, but... but 
You're glad it did. Oh, yeah. Heart and Body Extract is a 100% organic formula that promotes a strong heart, healthy arterial flow, better circulation, improves erectile and prostate gland function, and provides youthful energy, strength, and stamina. Find out more at HeartAndBodyExtract.com. Heart and Body Extract, paired with healthy heart choices, is a winning combination. Call toll-free to order or for free information. 1-866-295-5305. 1-866-295-5305. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here. Our toll-free number, by the way, is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, you can also join us on Skype, just like uh, Drew there did a moment ago in Des Moines. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. If you're online, your cell phone, your uh, laptop, desktop computer, whatever the method you're getting online, there are people who want to know what you're doing, like your own internet service provider. They're probably saving all of the websites that you visit, the search terms that you enter, maybe keeping those logs for several years in some cases. Criminals, some of them are trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets. That's all a possibility, but you can stop that from being a possibility by encrypting your internet connection. All you have to do is go to proxpn.com slash FTL and download their free software. You can get started with their free account, um, but you're going to want to upgrade likely to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth. Servers around the world you can access. You can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You do it all and get it for uh, 50% off the regular monthly price for the lifetime of your account when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's code FTL, like Free Talk Live, and 50, as in 50% off. Uh, you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL, use promo code FTL50, and get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. We're going to get back into your calls and thoughts, but with you in studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Taren P. Lupo. And Mark. We were talking about Bitcoin, and the gentleman who called at the beginning of the show had some questions. He's been talking with his dad about it. Um, and, you know, people who get money have important questions about Bitcoin because it doesn't seem like the money that you're used to. Like, what's it backed by? What gives it its inherent value was one of the questions previously. And this was an issue that I struggled with in the, in the beginning of being in, uh, introduced to Bitcoin. My, you know, coming at, coming at it from like a precious metals perspective was 
well, what's backing Bitcoin? Because, you know, with gold, you, you've got gold, right? Yeah, it's, what backs gold, though? It's gold is something you can use in industry and in industrial applications and things like that. Gold Same has utility, silver. but nothing backs gold, right? Like gold right. is gold. It and, and gold has yeah. utility and gold has value because people demand it. But gold is, in fact, backed by nothing. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying yeah. there, but it, it is valuable in I just the marketplace. Think that for me, that's what the turning point was. Once I realized that Bitcoin's value is in its utility and that gold's value is in its utility, then I was able to see that, um, you know, that it didn't need something to back it because yeah. it was the thing that sort of backs itself Yeah, in the case of bitcoin it is backed by its network by this indestructible uh network that is so dis uh, diffused dis dispersed all across the world uh it's decentralized as they say and that means that it can't be taken out by a, an attack targeted against one server like you know with uh these old old money companies, the banks and those folks, the credit card companies, they keep their servers in one or two or three locations. There aren't that many places where their servers are located and uh, the the right attack can take them down. And in fact, we've seen the hack groups, for instance, Anonymous and such, attack these websites like Visa's website and have actually taken it offline. So that's a, something that you can do to Visa, but you can't do to Bitcoin because Bitcoin doesn't have a single server somewhere. It's dispersed amongst probably hundreds of thousands of nodes all it's around the world. It's also the largest computer as a result of its distribution is the largest computer in the world. Right. So that network, that super reliable network is worth something. And the money that is uh, is on that network, Bitcoin, uh, so Bitcoin's like two things. Bitcoin is the network and it's also the money. So uh, it's so the money has this network that it, it sort of moves around on, if you will. And there's inc there's an incredible value to that network. There's there's value to the money and the fact that it is cryptographically secure, as you were talking about previously, Mark. All of these are factors that play into why Bitcoin is worth what it's worth. Other things that play into that uh, price are the fact that companies are accepting it. So there are big companies as large as Dell Computer and Wikipedia that'll take Bitcoin. Even small mom and pops, like right here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, there's a little corner news store that'll take Bitcoin. You can walk in, buy some beef jerky, a pack of cigarettes, and a newspaper, and you can pay with your smartphone with Bitcoin. Uh, there's a garden center, and there's a uh, there's a hair salon and things like that. So, so lots of people are taking it. That is something that plays into why it's worth something. Because if nobody was taking Bitcoin, it would all it would only really be worth on speculation. It'd be worth as much as Litecoin. Litecoin is a competitor to uh, to Bitcoin. Actually, Litecoin's taken by a few places, but not there, many. Yeah, not many. Um, and there's sh uh, an organization called uh, Shapeshift.io that That's allow right. you to take uh, the other cryptocurrencies out there and turn them into to Bitcoin and do business that way. So there's a step away from essentially using any cryptocurrency. And um, yo, you're sorry. getting a fire call. There's yeah. apparently a fire. <laughs> I hope there's not a motor right vehicle now. Do you have to go or something? I am not going to leave. Okay. No. <laughs> the deal I have with the fire department is is that I will be um, on call until five. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Um, but I did have a call today, and that's why I had it on my hip. Um, there was a uh, sadly a woman um, had a bee uh, in the car, and she was swiping oh, at it or something like that, and, and ended crashed. up and smashed the truck right into a power pole. Oh, um, wow. She was fine, but the power pole uh, is good. Well, at least crashed. she didn't run into anybody else yep, yeah it's true could have been worse uh, so anyway there's all these things that are very valuable about bitcoin the fact that it's cryptographically secure means it can't be hacked and so that makes it valuable too uh so you should do some more research i'd recommend going to weusecoins.com it's a great website to go and learn more about bitcoin let's go to your calls and thoughts about what you want antonio is on the line in maryland hello antonio hey, yes hello hey you're on the air on free talk live go ahead Yes, um, I'm trying to get some information on sovereign rights to operate a private vehicle. And I, I went to, to uh, court yesterday about this, and the judge really didn't want to hear it. And I really feel as though she, uh, she, she really slammed. I tried to invoke my constitutional rights so that I could um, travel the state without a, a license and without tags and mm. all of that stuff that it me on down here because I've tried to invoke um, Sh Shapiro versus Thompson, the right to travel freely and autonomously because, you know, driving is supposed to be a right, not a privilege, and they don't get it down here. No, they don't get it anywhere. I am familiar with what you're talking about, the idea of the right to travel. I've done a little bit of this activism myself. 
Um, and generally, the government bureaucrats just don't care. I mean, there's you can show them all the court precedents that you want to. You can show them, you know, whatever evidence that you have. And they'll that, tell you driving's a privilege. That claims that driving yeah. or traveling is a right. Well, they're going to claim that driving is uh, is a privilege, and the people who are t- are trying to argue the opposite are saying that it's traveling, not driving, because driving is a legal term. Uh, so traveling, they say, is legal and. Well, the, the, the big mistake a lot of people expect is that the government will actually follow its own rules. They so, don't do that. You yeah. know, you might have them completely right on paper, but good luck. They're not going to accept it. So uh, so what happened? I mean, you were driving with no tag and you got pulled over? Well, actually, my tags expired a year ago, and I've been driving like that ever since. And they really haven't bothered me much about it, but as far as parking fines, yeah, they get me a lot with that. But uh, the police really haven't bothered me. But once I went to court, now here's, here's where it was. Once I got to the judge, she didn't want to hear it. And um, she she uh, just slammed me and, and pretty much threw me out of court with this. And about four hours afterwards, I've had nothing but police presence ever since. They pulled me over like four hours afterwards, gave me a ticket for... Um, Interesting. For... Uh, my tag. Yeah, I know. All I think what I'd like to see happen is the right to travel people all move to New Hampshire and start doing it all at the same time. Because if you do it one off, one offs, you get picked off. There's more coming up. Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diasora and Cross.tv. Paid non-attorney spokesperson yeah, Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Wednesday, gold is $8 higher at $1,117 per ounce. Silver is up $0.13 cents at $15.48 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $266 U.S. dollars. Check out our Twitter at Full Metal Liberty for twice daily metals quotes and updated market information. Or give us a call anytime at 800-874-9760. Visit us online at rrbi.co. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. 
I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Hey, it's Free Talk Live, and you can join us here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And, of course, you can join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Don't forget, if you want to save big time on your Amazon purchases, you do need to get some Bitcoin and then go shopping at Purse. Yeah, we just talked about Bitcoin and businesses taking Bitcoin. And it's great to, uh, to be able to spend your Bitcoin someplace. But a real game changer for Bitcoin is if you can use it to save uh, you know, to make up to have a big savings. One of the reasons that people will go to many of these websites is to, to get coupons and things like that. A coupon is basically a currency, and um, this allows Bitcoin to be turned into essentially a coupon for everything you need to buy to live, essentially, because Amazon has basically everything you need, except yeah, maybe leafy green vegetables. We're talking about 20% off. On average, you can get more than that. Somebody just posted on our uh, AMP only Facebook group that they got, I think it was 30% off. Maybe it was even more than that. It was at least 30% off of something they bought on Amazon. Was, yeah. I got a 28%. I got yeah. that high. So. What did you get for 28%? If um, you don't mind me asking. I got a music book, a book on uh, how to play big band music. Very cool. So Cheap music. Big discounts are available to you if you go to purse.freetalklive.com. You just sign up through that link. Even if you don't have Bitcoin yet, you can go and start and sign up at purse.freetalklive.com. And when you do that... When you do finally buy something through Purse, you can go through their regular URL after you've signed up, and Free Talk Live will get a very small portion of your purchase price. We go back to Antonio in Maryland. Antonio, you uh, you're gotten you've gotten into this uh, freedom to travel movement, and you're disappointed that it didn't work out in court. The judge basically, <laughs> you know, booted you out of the courtroom, and then you said you've been targeted by the police ever since. And this just happened to you very recently. Yesterday. And so I, had you, a court date yesterday. I had a court date yesterday, and four hours later, I had nothing but police sitting outside my house. Seems uh, awfully oh. coincidental. And, uh, you know, having had experience in this freedom to travel area, I know that uh, there is no freedom to travel. They are not going to generally allow you to get away with this. However, there are people who do have some interesting stories. I would point you to a man named Jay Noon, N-O-O-N-E. Uh, he actually has never had a driver's license, I believe, and he's managed to pull this off for a number of you know big years, his whole adult life, from what I understand. So your mileage may this, vary on this. Hmm? What is his first name? J J A Y. You can find him on Facebook. He's an interesting guy, and again, what he has done in Massachusetts won't necessarily work where you are in Maryland, because there's no consistency between how one judge handles something and another one does. And, you know, part of what is happening with Jay may simply be that the police just don't want to deal with him anymore because he's such a pain in the butt in that he won't go and bow down to them and he won't go and get the required paperwork. And, um, you know, if if he's just so or ornery that it's hard for them to handle, maybe that's why he's been successful. It's hard for me to really say whether one way works or another one doesn't. Another thing you might want to look into is the Free State Project. If you love the ideas of liberty, in addition to being free to travel, you can go to freestateproject.org. And the idea of the Free State Project is to gather together a bunch of libertarian types <laughs> to uh, one place so we can have more of an effect on the political system. And if you got enough people in one place who are doing things like freedom to travel, you could, in theory, also right. overwhelm the, uh, the actual enforcement apparatus as well. So those are a couple suggestions for you, Antonio. Anything else you want to share tonight? Well, um, what inspired me to do this, other than my girlfriend, was Carl Miller. I'm not familiar with, with that person. Carl Miller? Um, hold on. Was Sony... 
Is this one of these internet oh, gurus? Yeah. Hmm? Yes, uh, Carl Miller. Uh, now, the um, they actually checked my license for the um, the UCC number on my license, which um, I did not have at the time, but I'm looking into trying to get, get that uh, on. I've never seen any evidence that this UCC stuff is valid at all uh, or that it will work in any way, shape, or form. What you were referring to is the Uniform Commercial Code. And the, the UCC yeah. exists. It's real. You can go and read it if you want to. It's really just a boring uh, list of uh, sort of rules for commercial organizations interacting with one another. Essentially, that's my understanding of what the UCC is. But there are all these conspiracy theories out there that if you write the right UCC code, like 1-207 or whatever, on the right documents, that somehow that will free you from having to follow uh, all sorts of government rules. And I, again, there are a lot of people who claim these things on the Internet, but they have very, very little in the way of actual evidence to prove their claims. Uh, Antonio, thanks for your call tonight. I appreciate it. Good luck out there. One thing that I would also like to recommend to the people who are willing to do what Antonio is willing to do, because there are a lot of theor uh, theories out there, and there are a lot of people promoting these theories. Some of them call this show. And I always ask the same question, and that is, where's the video? Let's get some video of someone going into court and either having success or falling flat on their face. Let's get as many videos of this as we possibly can. So if you, for instance, do live in New Hampshire uh, or if you move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project and you do some freedom to travel activism and you want to go into court and try some sort of UCC thing, if you do that here in Keene, I'll come out and I'll record your, uh, your trial. I'm very interested in seeing how this kind of stuff plays out. And just having somebody make claims on the phone doesn't really do it for me. I want to see the actual court hearing. I want to see what the judge exactly says in response to the things that you're saying. Up different there. judges are going to say different things, though, and this That's is true. kind of one of the issues that the right to travel people is uh, have is is that they're they're throwing mud against a wall um, and and seeing what sticks. We don't. There's no consistency. You can go That's in right. and you can tell yeah. the judge, hey, I've I've got this court case that says I have the right to travel and whatever, and they're going to do whatever they want because there's not a consistent, concerted effort. If there's a concerted effort, then you will get some kind of sort of <clears throat> precedent in place, and then you'll be able to use that as a lever. Um, I, I don't know if there's a you know a right to travel on government roads or uh, I, I think there's, there's some argument for it. Um, I would say that you don't have a right to travel on my property. But mm -hmm. you know, that's all beside the point. It's kind of it's kind of interesting, um, and you're you're gonna have you need a plan, and the right to travel people have no plan. And yeah. yeah, and the uh, other issue with that is, um, I'd like to see some activism where where you just did it with a junk car. That's something that you don't care about getting taken away because I think they're it's, gonna take your car. It's it's gonna be an expensive game to play. Yeah, if you care is. about your it's car, your this is this is not what you want to do. But if you got some junkers that you really don't care about, like a lot of people have busted up farm cars and stuff, man, I would do that all day long. Just wait till you take, you know, get rid of this car for me. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> it's your take problem it now. Uh, so yeah, if that it is, runs, it's too valuable to me to do that. <laughs> yeah, that is something that I think is an important thing, Taryn. Is that is this is a costly road, right? I mean, even if you're even if you're not going to lose your car ultimately, because I can tell you that in New Hampshire, it's there's a good chance that they'll just let you tow your own car off the side of the road. I've, did, I've had that happen Didn't here. the Cannings get their van taken away for this a long Boy, time I don't, ago? I that, don't recall. that free press van. You're talking about some early movers. Yeah. Uh, I don't recall. Okay. I don't recall I just that. I thought it happened. There, there hasn't been activist. a lot of this. There really hasn't been a lot of freedom to travel activism up here in New Hampshire. There's been little bits of it here and there. I've done some. Uh, Lauren Canario has done some. And there, there really isn't that much. Yeah, so I'd like to see more. Uh, it's it's a little too high stakes for me to do something like that. You know, I don't mind fighting a five dollar, ten dollar ticket, that sort of little stuff, but risking my car, it's a lot. So, and that's the thing, right? Like, you know, risk is going to be required in order for us to achieve liberty in our lifetime. And you know, there's different levels of risk that people are willing to take, and I don't blame someone for not wanting to take risk. So hopefully what we can do is we can get the people who are willing to take some risks to come to New Hampshire and do it here together where they can support one another instead of just being this lone gunman out there, if you will. Not I don't mean like shooting anybody, but just, you know, a lone wolf activist out there uh, trying to take on the state all by yourself. It's just not going to work out for you. Even if you get lucky 
here and there and they toss out a charge or something like that. Like Mark said, there's no consistency to what's happening. If someone could show consistency, like, you know, they try the same approach on multiple occasions and you get the same results, that would be amazing. Right. Success doesn't mean you're right. Success means that you could very well mean that you're just annoying, right? Like the judge <laughs> the judge could be like, look, I just do uh, not care about this. This The next judge can deal with this. So, um, you know, dismiss, clunk, let the next guy deal with it. All right, more in moments, and you can join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Whether it's your thoughts on freedom to travel, Bitcoin, or we still have to talk about those nightclubs. Apparently, they are having a tough time these days. Taryn will tell us about that coming up on Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. So I say to Mark at lunch, look, you know, I keep hearing from the government that, you know, they're worried someday ISIS may get here. And I go, duh, uh, Garland, Texas, Muhammad cartoon shooting. ISIS is already here. I'm not waiting for these people to defend me. I, if they don't know ISIS is here already, they got no clue. I'm taking care of myself. Guns80.com, AR-15 kits, 30-shot magazines, great prices. They've even got the Hillary special. Guns80.com, that's 844-2-GUNS-80, guns80.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. 
Hey, Free Talk Live here. You can join us, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And joining you tonight, it's Ian. And Terran P. Lupo. And Mark. We're going to continue with your calls and thoughts. Also want to invite you to freetalklive.com, where you can get behind the show for 5 bucks a month with the AMP program. Go to amp.freetalklive.com, A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. The idea is the $5.00 comes into us we invest it into the show to get on more radio stations uh, and uh, more internet connections and more satellite signals and spread the ideas of freedom as far and as wide as possible let's go to the phones and to the fun let's talk to jack listening in syracuse jack are you actually listening to us on am radio in syracuse you bet i am wow that's uh good to know i'm gonna make a note about that uh <laughs> and it's wsyr that's carrying us it it is, right. and uh, you know I uh, I I've never listened to you before, but I was driving home from work and uh, I was catching. You guys sound like you're millennium. Are you are you young or are you are you my age? <laughs> In between, um, I'm a Gen Xer, uh, Taryn. Uh, I have gray hair. <laughs> I got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> and a gray beard. I am 35, so uh, we have a range of Ian uh, is potentially one of the yeah. youngest people, uh, potentially the youngest uh, nationally syndicated host or darn close That's to it. That's not true at all anymore. Who's that? Um, <laughs> there's a couple of younger guys uh, that okay. are younger than me. Andy I'm Dean. Uh, well, I guess he's not even a he's talk gone. show host anymore. Yeah. Ben Ferguson is younger, I think, than uh, Slightly. Than yeah. Anyway, I'm, th- I'm thankful I've got hair and I'm 59. <laughs> Well, welcome to Never the show, mind. Jack. Oh, I don't I don't know how long we've been on WSYR. It was actually a long time ago. That station, it's a clear channel, or no, what was clear channel now? It's iHeartRadio, uh, but or iHeartMedia. That station actually used to take us for their web stream years ago, and I, I didn't know they had put us on the radio wave. So welcome to the show. <laughs> uh, what was it you wanted Thanks. to share tonight? Yeah, thank you very much for, for, for bringing me on. Um, you know, I'm an anomaly. I'm a New Yorker. Uh, I don't know where you guys are located, but uh, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in the northern suburbs of New York. I was an investment broker for a long time. Then I was a corporate real estate broker in Westchester County, which is the highest tax county, probably the most expensive place to live in the United States. Um, that being said, I uh, in 2010, I decided to take it to the poorest county in New York State, which is Oswego County, up, uh, up uh, where SUNY Oswego is, State University of New York at Oswego, mm-hmm. um, which I played hockey for and where I went to college. But nevertheless, I'm a real estate broker up here now. Uh, I'm not living large. I didn't come up here with, you know, a million-dollar bankroll. But I can tell you, you know, flat out, and I'm sure you gentlemen, you know, being as, as smart as you are, already know that New York State's had the largest exodus of people in, for six years running now, California close second. Yeah, well, for good uh, reason. For, it's the, ranked as the most mm-hmm. unfree place in the United States with California a close second. Taxes are quite high in both those places. You're absolutely right, and uh, especially in Westchester but uh, and Nassau County, which is Long Island. But uh, t- taking that a step further, um, you know, there's no better state to be in than New York. If you become sick, infirm, disabled, they take care of their, their poor, as far as med- medicine is concerned, better than any state in the country. And the worst being Florida, all the states, the... The snowbirds go to Are you talking about work. like government welfare taking care of people? Yeah, I'm talking about. I'm talk- and let's face it, New York State went to manage health care in 1991, so we're way ahead of the curve, and we're being penalized by Obamacare because essentially our premiums are going up, not 40 percent like some states, but you know, in my case, 13 percent with the exchange I joined, which is one of the best in the state. Um, but we're, you know, it's like, you know, uh, I'll, I'll make an analogy for you guys. It's like, uh, you know, you're you're a great driver. You don't have any tickets or any any infractions, and you're, you know, you're getting an 11 percent surcharge to pay for the assigned risk DWIers or people that drive like maniacs. Um, that's essentially what New York State's doing with healthcare right now. But getting back to what I called you about, um, the deficit. And I want to flip it over. You were talking about Bitcoin. Um, and in Colorado, believe it or not, right now, uh, I don't want to say Colorado's a curve, but um, <laughs> they may be. There's actually ATM machines where you could actually go in and put a gold coin in there, and, and the 
machine's able to detect detect the metal and detect the weight, and of course at a discount give you cash greenbacks back. Really? Yeah. There's yeah, a gold absolutely. ATM machine out there in in Colorado gold, specifically. Well, I used I used AT, ATM ATM as 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 an analogy, but yeah, you go in, you put your gold in, and of course there's a lot of gold in Colorado because it's mined there. And uh, wow. or your bullion, but it's got to be in the form of a coin. I've heard of gold. Uh, I've heard of like gold vending machines, but I have not heard that there is another way around. Like I can't. Be, I can't even imagine that there would even be a high enough demand for uh, people wanting to turn gold into cash. But I guess, yeah, I guess there are no, those have, people standing no, on the side of the road in uh, in Florida uh, waving signs, cash for gold. So maybe maybe a machine is well, the yeah, way to do that. Yeah, you have to under. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. But you have to understand something when. When you go into these machines and you're, you're putting straight bullion in, in other words, they're not newsmanic coins, mm -hmm. which are you know, worth a little bit more, you don't have to provide a Social Security number. You do now when you sell bullion. Okay, Obama, the Obama administration huh. about a year and a half ago just implemented that. Yeah, if, if it's enough out, bullion. Yeah, yeah that, the coin world, I was going to say, the coin world is still a cash world. It's one of the last freedoms you have of uh, financial, you know, uh, the government not knowing what you're spending. But I didn't know about bullion that that had happened. And you're talking about large amounts. Well, I'm, t I'm, t I'm talking. I'm talking about if you go in with a gold bar, let's say, or, or a gold sheet, you're going to have to give a social security number to turn that in. Whether it's a pawn shop or huh. whoever you're buying it from, if they're legitimate, um, you have to give a social security. All number right. Now. So Jack, we've been all over Did the you, we've been all over the place, and you haven't really even talked about the deficit yet. I want to give you that. <laughs> I want to give yeah, you that well, chance I'll, here because we got to get other folks on. I'll tell you, well, we we know where the deficit's going. It's getting larger, but the the, the and when the you say the I'm deficit, to... or do you mean the do you mean, debt? Do you mean the debt? Well, yeah, the debt, the debt. It's twenty twenty trillion. I mean, forget about the unfunded liability. Yeah, close to that, yeah, yeah. And that's what's well, another fifty that's, trillion or two hundred trillion, depending we don't on how even you know what that. Yeah, and right. we don't even know what that is. It, it grows exponent, exponentially every year. But but where I'm going with this is, and it may it may be too late. I've I've spoken with several of my People I used to work with, and I'm not going to say who, but <laughs> but um, back to the gold standard. Oh, that's not going to happen at the national level. There's there's almost no chance of that. Well, right now the the Chinese are already starting the process of of, of you know taking the dollar out of existence. I mean, yeah, they've that, been saying that, that for a long time. I think 25 years I've been hearing that, yeah. that the Chinese is going to collapse. The I mean, I'm not saying that it won't happen, but there's there have been a lot of people making those claims for a long time. And, uh, you know, maybe they will actually pull the dollar, and that's fine. And maybe China will have, you know, be smart enough yeah. to actually— and, They're not going to back the yuan by gold. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they would either. But yeah, the, the politicians in, in D.C., with the exception of, like, Ron Paul, who is no longer in D.C., uh, they are not interested in a money that is actually value backed. That they, they haven't ever been interested in my lifetime, and there's no reason to believe not that. Not the that, ones in DC, not the ones in yeah. Brussels, not the ones in Beijing, not the ones anywhere. But why Jack, would they? I mean, where's the? There's incentive? no benefit to them. Yeah, for uh, they they can print no, no, up no, no, money no, for actually, anything they benefit, want. There is a benefit. What? No, there is a benefit for it, gentlemen, and I'll tell you. I'll tell you where it is. Is because you, when you continue to print money. What's that? What, what what's the paper value of money that isn't backed by by gold? Gold since since Greece, Egypt, go go back as far as you want to. Yeah. Okay. And look at the country that have a large supply of gold. You know, we don't know what's in Fort Knox because they won't let anybody in there. I suspect that's evidence that there's nothing in there. But you know, look, uh, there's no doubt that gold-backed currency is a good idea. I mean, I'm with you on in the long I, term, but the politicians are motivated by the short term. The politicians want to be able to print out as much money as they can, and you know, give that printed money to their politically connected buddies. Hey, Jack, welcome to the show. Thanks for calling tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Uh, our toll-free number, if you want to join us, is 855-450-FREE. And, you know, they love the idea of running up that debt. It's not like they're going to be forced to pay for it. No. No way. The and, next guy's coming down the line. I mean, the, you know, that's what that's what Washington— Get as much out as you can, as fast as yep. you can. Kick someone the can else's down problem. the road. <laughs> but, yeah, it's crazy. That's all that's going to happen. And, you know, even the, the politicians that come in the generations to follow will continue that playing that same game. Because as long as the printing presses are working and the U.S. hasn't hit hyperinflation, they can just print and print and print. And, again, all that money goes to the military industrial complex, the prison industrial complex, all the various different uh, connected 
people, the business people who are connected to these government goons, they're the ones who benefit from that, and the rest of us pay the price through inflation. Also, a lot of people forget the one big fact here is they can print out all the fake money they want, and guess what they're buying with it? Gold. They're using fake money to buy gold. There's tons of that going on. So we come back uh, with more. You can join us coming up here in moments. After the news for our number two of Free Talk Live. We'll talk about nightclubs, too. Taryn uh, is, I don't think you're concerned. You're just interested that nightclubs are dying off, apparently. We'll find out why that is. And you can share your thoughts with us about anything. It's Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Kid, let me paint you a picture. Tuesday night, your cog belt goes bust. Who will help you get what you need fast without the hoops, hurdles, or headaches? Granger, that's who. I love Granger. They got a wide variety of products and solutions. Granger makes it easy to get everything we need and answers for when we're not sure what the answer is. Now, kid, let me paint you another picture. It looks like a mop, a basement bathroom, and you all over it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.39 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,118 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $268. Antiwar.com reports in a unanimous vote Tuesday, the Iraq parliament has agreed to Prime Minister Haider Abadi's reform plan, which he insists will eliminate corruption of the government by eliminating sectarian quotas and a large number of high-ranking government positions, including most of his deputies. The vote effectively removes most of the remaining Sunni Arabs from Iraq's government and also some of Abadi's most powerful Shiite rivals. After the endorsement of the move by Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani, it's passed Passage was ensured and not a single member of parliament chose to vote against it. Real questions remain over how this will all work in practice, as well it eliminates set-aside posts that have encouraged a culture of political corruption, it also dramatically centralizes power under a body's control and eliminates most of the serious checks on his power. Instead of eliminating abuse of the power, this may simply centralize the abuse in a body's office. Abadi's predecessor, Nouri al-Malaki, had tried to marginalize the Sunni Arab political leadership by charging them with terrorism, but to limited effect. Abadi's move is more direct and far-reaching than this, and ironically also puts Malaki, now one of his deputies, out of a job. It is almost certain to fuel more Sunni resentment in the long run, as it consigns them to the permanent opposition with no chance of real power. 
Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. Bitcoin Not Bombs.com. UPI reports wind energy is cheaper than ever before in the United States and advances in turbine technology have helped make America the number one global producer of wind energy, according to a new Energy Department report. Ryan Weiser, co-author of the Energy Department's 2014 Wind Technology Market Report, said wind power's decreasing cost makes it more competitive with other energy sources, especially on the Midwestern Plains, where windy days are frequent and construction costs are often lower. The price of wind power last year was 2.35 cents per kilowatt hour, less than half of the cost in 2009 when prices peaked at 7 cents per kilowatt hour. The cost of installing wind turbines has declined and productivity has increased as the wind energy industry matures. Competition among companies like General Electric and Siemens has grown and manufacturing has become more efficient, according to Weiser. Longer blades generate more power and they're being used more wisely as the cost of production and installation goes down. Down. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports New York prison officials are investigating allegations that guards beat and abused dozens of inmates in an upstate New York prison after the daring escape of two convicted killers in June. The Department of Corrections and Community Supervision said it had been investigating for several weeks the allegations of prisoner abuse at the Clinton Correctional Center, which were first reported in the New York Times on Tuesday. The Times reported prisoners left behind in the so-called honor section of the prison, reserved for inmates with good behavior, including Richard Matt and David Sweat before their June 6th escape, described being beaten while handcuffed, choked, and slammed against cell bars and walls. The newspaper said it had reviewed letters and conducted prison interviews. Some said their privileges were revoked and personal possessions discarded. Patrick Alexander, alleged he was targeted for abuse because he was in a cell next to Matt, described being handcuffed and taken into a broom closet where three corrections officers, whom he had never seen before, beat and choked him while interrogating him about the escape. Two prison workers had been charged in the escape of Matt and Sweat, who broke through their cell walls, cut through steel pipes, and emerged through a manhole outside the prison walls. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A Japanese-American internment facility was still in operation in the mountains of Northern California. The facility should have been closed in 1945 and its 6,000 residents released, but unfortunately the camp was overlooked until this week. I am happy to announce, however, that the remaining 118 de detainees have now been fully exonerated of suspicion of spying for General Tojo and they have been free. Next item of business, the President will be meeting with the Australian Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Yes, Denise? Oversight. How could this have happened? Well, Denise, it looks like the camp just somehow slipped through the cracks. The end of the Second World War was a hectic time in America, and it's only natural that we let a couple of things slip in our excitement over defeating the Nazis. Who's going to be held responsible for this? Investigation? No, there won't. In fact, the War Relocation Authority was responsible for the decommissioning of the internment facilities, um, but that organization ceased to exist in 1946, so no. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Hey, this is Free Talk Live, and of course, you're invited to join us here. The toll free number is 855 450 free. 8 Five five four five zero three seven three three. Still to come, the nightclubs of America apparently not so popular as they used to be. Terrence got that story. Also, Rand Paul showed up in Keene, New Hampshire today, and 
Mark, you uh, went out to meet him and uh, talk to him at one of his campaign events. See him again. I mean, I've met him before. Okay. Well, Daryl uh, W. Perry and I went out to ambush interview Rand Paul at a different campaign event this morning, and our response from him was very different compared to uh, yours, Mark, although I haven't heard your story yet as far as what it was you asked him. You asked him some sort of question. And uh, so we can talk about those things. And of course, you can bring up anything. Let's start out this hour, by the way, in studio with you. It is Ian. And Taryn P. Lupo. And King Mark the First. Let's talk to Joe in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live. Joe. Yes. Uh, the uh, Y'all were talking about the Bitcoin? Yes, sir. Somebody had to come up with the idea and then build the computers. Who paid for the expense and who pays for the upkeep of the computers? That's an excellent question. So Bitcoin was follow the money. This is, by the way, a smart question, right? Like yeah. you know, first thing you want to you want to sort of dig down and find out where you know follow the money. So who's yes, behind it's this? A great right? question. Who's who's behind Bitcoin? So initially, six years ago, when Bitcoin came out back in 2009, it was released to the world by someone calling themselves Satoshi Nakamoto. Which is all likelihood is not their name. Well, yeah, it's definitely, no one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. Is it a male, female, an alien uh, group of people? No one knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. But he or she released this code that is Bitcoin, it's a computer program, to the world. And uh, as an open source project, and since then it's been taken over by a group of volunteer uh, programmers that are, you know, multi. Not just volunteers. The main the b developer does get paid. Really? Yeah, I didn't he's, know that. he's paid by the Bit Bitcoin Foundation. Oh, okay. Well, in the beginning, at the very least, there was no Bitcoin yes. Foundation, and uh, people who are working on Bitcoin, a lot of them are just putting in their time because, you know, they think it's a good thing. So it's an open source project, which means that anyone who's got the programming chops can go in there and they can actually read the code and they can audit it and make sure that it's legit. And they can make sure that there aren't any back doors that will, you know, be accessible by the NSA or whoever. And so uh, that sort of answers your question of who created it. And as far as who's running the computers that back it, well, hundreds of thousands of people all around the world are. Maybe even more than hundreds of thousands. I don't know what the you know the current node count is on the Bitcoin network, but the Bitcoin network exists because of individuals all around the globe who are part of that network, and that is one of the reasons why it's imperme it's impermeable. It's impervious to attack. Uh, you can't take it down. It can't be targeted by any government around the world uh, for a shutdown. So uh, it, I'm running the Bitcoin client software right here, right now on the LRN Studio computer. Yeah, you can run the Bitcoin client on your computer too. Right. So the answer is, Joe, anyone who wants to be part of the Bitcoin network is the computer system that uh, that backs it. Does that make any sense? All right. There are no fees taken out to uh, pay for the computer. You know, there had to be some startup cost. Well, the, the, uh, the startup cost was probably taken by some was taken by Satoshi Nakamoto, um, and it was all volunteer work. Um, you know, there's a there's an open source software movement out there, and lots of things are created without the money going into it. The the programming is you know relatively simple compared to uh, sort of the size of the project. It's just it it's big and it doesn't um, and it's a robust network. But the programming, by um, compared to its size, isn't that big. Uh, you don't need this huge team of uh, programmers to, uh, to to have put this thing to, uh, together. So the, the people who did it did it in the, sort of their, their spare time. Now, yes, there are fees, but those fees are negligible. They're like fractions of a penny to a penny to maybe two pennies a piece to send uh, it's money. Usually, like two or three cents is the typical fee on any Bitcoin transaction. But another thing you need to know about how it was funded in the beginning and still today is through the mining uh, operation, the mining side of Bitcoin. So think about gold mining, and this is like the mining for the digital, for the digital. world. Oh, we just lost him. He dropped off the line. Uh, so hopefully he's still listening. We'll continue the ex explanation anyway. So the idea of mining, and I don't want to get too technically confusing here because honestly I don't understand it all myself but essentially the computers that are out there the people that are running these mining rigs are running specialized hardware that it's their job to basically solve very complicated math problems cryptographic kind of math <laughs> and uh, you know this is beyond my my reach but uh, it's that's what's happening and so the computer that solves the math problem first gets rewarded with a certain amount of Bitcoin. Not always first. I mean, just um, it's sort of random to some extent. Oh, okay. I thought it was whoever makes it first. Okay. Um, but anyway, uh, so somebody you know who solves this problem gets rewarded with the Bitcoin. I could I could be wrong about exactly you know what the parameters are, but these miners are the ones who are doing the work. And so in the beginning, 
the mining rewards were much larger than they are today. Over time, as Bitcoin becomes more popular, as more miners enter the field, sort of like in the you know the gold rush when a bunch of people were in there you know mining for gold, you might not have been as likely to get as much uh, if there, there were a bunch of people in the area who'd already sort of you know were mining at it. Same thing with Bitcoin. As more miners enter into the Bitcoin mining field, the rewards for the Bitcoin mining they they half over time. So they I don't know what it was the first go 50. around. It was 50 in the beginning? Yes. Okay. So it's only like, what, uh, 25 right now or something like that? 12. 12. Is, is it 12, 12 and a half? Is it 12 and a half? I think it's I 12 know, and a half. We're going to we're gonna have to pull up that information. Anyway, the more people get involved, the, the more difficult it becomes to mine and the lower the rewards for mining. If fewer people were to get involved in mining, so if people were to leave the mining game, it would actually become easier to mine and the rewards for mining could go up over time. So there's sort of this floating system uh, that's in place to reward people. And of it's, course, I think it's at uh, t it says twelve point five by twenty uh, seventeen. Okay, so that means it's twenty five right now. I think is the current uh, the current reward structure because yeah, it, it keeps be. it keeps having over uh, over time as it gets more difficult to mine. So uh, that should answer to some extent where the the money was coming from or the fees were coming from in the beginning. Is there were a bunch you know people were mining and it was relatively easy to mine in the beginning days. So they were getting these fifty Bitcoin payouts all the time. But of course back then Bitcoin was worth a fraction of a cent. You know, Bitcoin was was next to zero in value when it first started. The first Bitcoin transaction was 20,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas. That was the first at least recognized, known, public Bitcoin transaction. And if you think about, uh, you know, the price of Bitcoin today being about 270 U.S. dollars per Bitcoin, you multiply that times 20,000, and if the person who uh, had sold those pizzas back in the day, several years ago, if the person who sold those pizzas held on to their twenty thousand bitcoins, they'd have over five point, you know, they'd have about five point four million dollars worth of bitcoins today. So uh, it's, it's just been a fascinating thing to watch over time. Yeah, I think that um, if you're looking for the dark under underbelly of what uh, Bitcoin is. You're probably not going to find it. You're not going to find that uh, evil, scary thing because from what I can tell, Bitcoin was a passion project and was designed with the best of intentions. And Yeah, the designer of Bitcoin had no idea it was going to take off, right? They just came up with a, a better form of money, released it to the world, and it took off, right? And it didn't take off right away. No, it didn't take, take off right away. Um, and the reason... I think after six years, if uh, the hackers were going to do anything to Bitcoin, they'd have done it. They've right. done whatever they can to Bitcoin, and but what they can do is they can go after businesses that have bad security practices and the holding of their own Bitcoin. That's mainly what they've done. But as far as uh, you know, that 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 has to do with weaknesses in their website, not weaknesses in Bitcoin. So you can share your thoughts, whether it's on Bitcoin or whatever happens to be on your mind here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and uh, that's 855-450-3733. Taryn, let's talk about nightclubs, because apparently they are having a tough time. Well, yeah, the uh, the article I'm going to read from is from the UK. It's the Independent, and they're mainly talking about British nightclubs. But uh, the same thing, my understanding, is also going on in the U.S., it's a pretty long article, but I'll read the first part and then sum down the rest of it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Not going out. Why millennials are no longer going to nightclubs is the name of the article. If you want to look it up. We'll oh, put it on well, our Facebook. I want you on. to send me a link Here to we the go. article. We'll put it up on the Facebook and uh, the Twitter. And, of course, there's a lot of similarities between cultures over in uh, Great Britain and here. So I wonder if the same thing is happening in the United States as well. We'll find out more about uh, the failure or at least the impending doom of the nightclub business. And maybe I'm blowing it out of proportion. I haven't heard I'm the story. Not so. really. <laughs> All right. We'll come, we'll come back then here in moments. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. This message is for home intruders, the cowards who break into people's homes to steal their hard earned property, criminals who shatter lives and rob people of their privacy and security. Listen very carefully. We're the home security experts at LiveWatch, and we're taking you down. Because we're letting everyone try our newest home security system for one full year in their home. To take advantage of this amazing offer, call now, 1-800-670-9259. LiveWatch has been helping protect homes for years, and we've learned the secrets that intruders like you don't want people to know. Criminals, it's time for you to be afraid, because every person who calls will be protected against cowards like you. 
To the criminals listening, we're taking you down. To those who want to help protect their homes, call the security experts to try the LiveWatch security system. There are no long-term contracts, and if you're not completely satisfied, you can cancel at any time. Try LiveWatch now by calling 1-800-670-9259. That's 1-800-670-9259. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed the results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph 2, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph 3, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph 4, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. ExpressCoin.com is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrency with money order or check if you're in most of the U.S. or Canada it's expresscoin.com, and you can even do it from your smartphone. They've got an app, and there's also a coupon code that you need to know about. It's FTL, like Free Talk Live. Coupon code FTL allows you to get up to $40 worth of the cryptocurrency of your choice with no transfer fee whatsoever. So get started with Bitcoin over at expresscoin.com, because it's not too late. You know, we were talking about Bitcoin earlier and uh, and how it is that the uh, the price has gone up quite a bit over time. Some people will say to themselves, oh, it's too late. It's so expensive. $270 per Bitcoin. But you don't have to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can buy the a The value of the U.S. dollar has gone down over time. Is it too late for that? 
You know, like, well, you know, people <laughs> yeah. look at it as an investment and they are obviously worried it's going to go down in value. And it certainly could. Right. That's a possibility. But over time, I'm hoping it will go up in value. And regardless, if it does go up in value, then you're going to be kicking yourself again 10 years later. And if it, let's say it's three thousand dollars per Bitcoin in 10 years, you'll be saying to yourself, drat, what was I thinking when it was $300 uh, dollars per Bitcoin? That could so. certainly happen, but I think the value in Bitcoin is in its uh, utility as a currency as opposed to um, you know, its uh, vehicle uh, for investment. I don't know what it's, you know, as far as what it's going to be as far as investment mm. goes. And what's important is, is it gets used as a currency because if it doesn't, then it is no vehicle for investment. That's true. Although the more it is used as a currency, the more likely it, I think, will go up over time. That's just right. my speculation. It's, but it is not a it is not an investment unless it's a vehicle, uh, it's currency. Yeah, I see what you're saying there. Uh, so join us here, 855 450 free. We were talking about just barely scratching the surface here, Taryn, of the story from the Independent. Yeah, the Independent. In the UK. And so what it's talking about is that there's been a decline in England over the last uh, ten years, the last decade. There's been a huge drop in nightclubs, and they're trying to figure out why. Hmm. So I'll read you a little bit of this, and yeah, then I'll kind of summarize it. Um, so long to the Ritzy, and farewell to the Cinderella Rockefeller. The long tradition of the great British nightclub appears to be on its way out. Even the famous London dance music clubs such as Turnmills, Bagley's, and The End have succumbed to the process that uh, has seen the UK's total portfolio of nightclubs shrink by almost half wow. from 3,144 in 2005 to 1,733 a decade later. Mm. Wow. That's this, a big deal. That's a big deal. I mean, that's a huge drop, and they're trying to figure out why. And uh, it's I have my own theories on this too, but um, I'm going to continue what the article says right. here. The statistic is from the Association of the Licensed Multiple uh, <clears throat> Retailers, the ALMR, it's um, not just a signal of the uh, effect of the smoking ban or the imposition of student loans, but of a fundamental shift in the way a new generation chooses to spend its entertainment budget. After listening to their uh, favorite playlist on Spotify, when friends on Facebook and WhatsApp have looked at all the other attractive weekend adventures that might make for a far better shots on Instagram, Another Friday night at the Mystique just doesn't do it. As far as pulling, there's all these tender. Now, Mark, I remember you talking about what is tender for people that don't know? Is that a, yeah, a dating I, service? I'm by no means an expert on tender, no, but I heard uh, you mention I, it though. Yeah, I did mention it. And I think that what Tinder is is like a dating app on your phone and you can look at people who are in, I guess, certain criteria, you know, say you're looking for females, eighteen to twenty five. You can scroll through um, you know, that particular uh, demographic. I don't know. I've never used it. I'm just guessing that that's a demographic. Mm -hmm. and uh, I, <laughs> A likely story. And you can say, oh, I like her, I don't like her, I don't like her. And I guess you sort of ping them when um, you say, you know, you're interested in meeting them or whatever, and then and they decide whether they're interested in meeting you. Doesn't it ping them when you say that you like them automatically? I think so. But and I'm also, you described it as a dating service. I'm not saying people don't use it for that purpose, but I've heard it described as a sex service, like essentially... Oh. A a one night stand, or not necessarily one night stands, but you know, a uh, somebody you could come back to Hook over up. and over again. Hookup service, that's the word, right? Yeah, so, I, I, I don't mean, know how many of the people on Tinder are actually looking for relationships. I'm not sure about that. I I don't know either. I've I never not used be able it to, either. I would not be able to claim uh, what people's motives are, but uh, the results seem to be that it goes pretty well, I guess. Um, certainly, as far as people getting sex, yeah. Yeah, from what well, I can tell. That's what when, I've heard. When I was a young single, I mean, we went to nightclubs to meet girls. And now, you know, this is pretty much dawn of the internet. I'm, I'm probably dating myself here. But now you can just get online and meet girls. You don't have to go spend a bunch of money. You don't have mm. to go. Uh, and honestly, and here's a night, the trick, by the way. If you, if, if you plan a date um, online, coffee. Gentlemen, yeah. start with coffee. It is less, uh, uh, you know, imposing. It's not, everybody doesn't get quite as scared. Mm. And um, also, you're not laying out fifty bucks. It, it, yeah, for dinner. If, if if fifty bucks might be cheap for a dinner. Yeah. Well, so and and plus, you know, if you're out for coffee, then there's more conversation that can happen. You're not gonna your food's not gonna get cold if you're talking. You know, if somebody's talking. A or night whatever. place, a nightclub is really a terrible place to meet women. You it can't you have to awful. scream at each other right. to talk, and you, you it 
How can you connect with somebody in a place like that? I don't, I don't understand get it. it. But I mean, that was, I didn't know any better. I guess people. So you you've know, done this then? Oh, uh, when I was young, sure. I mean, I, I went to all these clubs and, uh, and my friends would always talk me into going, and I was always offended when I walked in the door and they wanted money. And I was like, what do you mean there's a cover charge? I hate cover I like, charges. what the heck is this? I'm then coming to spend money. you're paying seven bucks money. for a drink I'm, on top yeah, of that, right? I'm, I'm paying yeah. for the benefit of spending money. What? What? And then I would get so mad that they'd let women in for free. So I, I was the wrong customer for them. I, <laughs> yeah. I did not go very often. Um, but you got to imagine that things have changed so much, because when we were younger— you pretty much only dated in your own social circles. It's the people you knew, some of the people you knew in school, and maybe some friends of friends. So if I added them all up, maybe 100 people. I was my pool of people I could pull from. And then the internet started, and uh, all of a sudden, that became thousands and thousands of people. So, sure. I mean, they had dating services before the internet, right? It was like a there, lot of work, There though. was the old dating services where you'd go uh, to some sort of place, and they would sit you in front of a yeah. VHS camera, <laughs> and you'd just sort of talk about yourself or the, whatever. The lowered expectations. Do you remember those skits yeah. on uh, yeah, Matt, TV? Matt TV? Yeah, yeah. yeah, lowered expectations. But those were real, right? Like, <laughs> they, those yeah, dating they, services I, were real, and then they would I have... actually did one, so okay. I, I knew about that. I never did anything like it. Um, yeah. I, well, you uh, were in prison. Well, <laughs> That's a different date and service. I did think about <laughs> dating services, but I, I I never met anybody at a nightclub that I can think of as sort of a regular patron. I did mm-hmm. as a radio guy, but then you're, you, there's some small level of ce- celebrity at, uh, involved, and you get yeah. The only time attention. I've ever been in a nightclub was, was it was some sort of radio remote, and I was setting it up or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> right. I did. It was well. I didn't understand that a lot of people go to just hear music and dance. They don't really go to to meet women or, okay. or, or you know or guys or whatever. Uh, I didn't know that. I thought it was just a meat grinder. That's what know, I thought. To pick up women. Now, that does happen for sure, but I uh, I never happened to me, man. <laughs> I don't know. Well, isn't that why they that's, always had ladies a, night, right? Like they're, yeah, you know, these nightclubs. They'd let these women I'm, in for free, right. and then I'd be all offended that I had to pay 15 bucks. But we'll get back to this yeah, story. I hear because more about this, uh, they're going to tell us why. They're going to tell you why. The millennials are walking away from these nightclubs. And there are, I'm sure, a number of reasons for it, but that's what's happening. And the nightclubs have cut in half in, in the half. last decade in the UK. Uh, maybe you can tell us what has happened in your area as well. You've, are there a bunch of shutdowns of these things? Uh, 855-450 free is our number. This is Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. Wait till you hear the least popular girl's name in 2004. We'll start with Rack. 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 <laughs> Crumpet. Crump- R- well, Crumpet's got a funny. Someone named their little girl Willie. Willie. Canel- Canelloni. Can- Canelloni. Canelloni. Lasagna. Mmm. Tasty. <laughs> and Biff. <laughs> yeah, Biff. The These least are girls popular names. name. <laughs> For the, the least popular name. These are all made up, folks. Do I don't not care. believe this nonsense. This is not news. I don't care. <laughs> I haven't laughed this much all week. <laughs> oh. This may be my favorite. Rumpy Pumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how could you think that one up? I mean, if you were faking this list, I could understand that you could fake Donald Duck or Scrooge or, or Pork. But how do you think Rumpy of Rumpy Pumpy? Pumpy. Rumpy Pumpy. R-U-M-P-E-P-U-P-E-E. Rumpy Pumpy. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For 
more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got Ian. Taryn P. Lupo. And Mark. And I just put Taryn's newest video up on our Facebook and our Twitter. So if you want to go check out the story about ponies. You're doing a story about ponies. <laughs> Who doesn't love ponies? I, well, I think well, probably most people like ponies. <laughs> Everybody guess. loves ponies. I, I didn't really like horses growing up, though, because they were stinky. Well, like this is actually more about um, in these endangered Newfoundland ponies. There's only about 300 breeding age ones left in the world, and there happens to be a population of rescue right here in New Hampshire huh. for them. So and you went and visited them. I went and visited them, and uh, as I was there, I found out um, that everybody's up in arms about this pipeline. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a supposedly this gas pipeline that they are trying to talk people into running across New Hampshire. And uh, at this point, they're pretty much threatening to use eminent domain, and uh, and then the IRS takes your land and decides what it's worth. You know that the, that's they what eminent domain is. Yes, I don't think no. it's the IRS that's that does that. That's what I was told. I don't know what uh, what I thought it was. They're is. the ones that price it because it, it's based on tax. What the, I would think the the New Hampshire government would be the one doing the, the taking. I don't know. You know, honestly, I, I I that was not brought up in the story. I'm just saying that that's what the government. Decides the how, how much about that? they're going to give you for the, the land that they're going to force exactly you to sure sell to them. Which agency? But so um, the pipeline is threatening the ponies. Well, now? yeah, because of, all right. So there's only they have ten of these breeding ponies of just a few in in the world, right? And what happens is if you put a compressor by anywhere within about a mile of livestock, it can screw up livestock. The compressor is this thing to push the gas through the pipeline, and hmm. it off gases. It, it builds up pressure, and so it doesn't blow up. It lets gas into the air. Well, there's all these studies that show that it can make your livestock sterile and screw them up, which oh, no. is really bad for a breeding program trying to save these ponies. Right. So this lady is really teed off that she did all this work, and then... Uh, and then, you know, a pipeline Basically, moves she's going to have to move because... no one will buy the property because now it's devalued. You know, everybody's scared that there's a pipeline going in, so she can't get out of it. She's got oh, these ponies no. that are breeded. And uh, it's really interesting because, you know, it was um, people that really played by the rules. There, there was actually one of the guys that owns, uh, runs a rescue is an ex-cop, and they're talking, and he's like, you know, I trusted the government all these years, and then when I needed <laughs> they screwed them, him. yeah, now they're my worst enemy, yeah. you know? And it's it's a real slap in the face of reality. But please check that story wow. out. It's over on the Facebook page. And, and you can uh, also go to TarynLupo.com, right? Yeah, look at that. Yes, right. TarynLupo.com. So let's you. talk more about nightclubs and how things are changing. Obviously, we know dating services are no longer what they used to be in the 90s and the 80s or whatever. Now there's online dating. And you don't have to go to some club and yeah. shout over loud music to try to, to meet people. 
and the mil- the millennials are changing their changing habits here. Yeah, I mean, they grew up at a different time period where you could just reach out on a computer and meet women or, or men. Yeah, know? that's a good point. For, throughout their entire adult lives, there have been online dating services. Yeah, they don't understand the whole what we had to go through when we were young to to meet somebody. <laughs> Walk hill uphill both ways. That's to right. The nightclub <laughs> to the nightclub <laughs> and pay six dollars a bottle of beer. I was so offended. I'm telling you, I'm still really offended by a cover charge. I, I don't care. Um, all right. So what else? This so, is from the UK, right. by the yeah, way. Yeah. So they focus more on, you know, uh, apparently people really go to nightclubs to hear like their awesome sound system and the bands and the, the music. So here's what it's talking it, about. It, at least you'll get what you pay for at that point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, millennials favor experiences over stuff, and nightclubs should benefit from that, says Ranzi Yacob, senior strategist of digital agency Think. But millennials also realize that their time is their uh, scarcest resource they have. So why would they spend their precious time revisiting the same experiences every weekend? Which is kind yeah, of an that's interesting a good point. point I mean, it's changed. We didn't have much else to do but go to the same stuff every weekend. If you go to a nightclub, what's really going to change there? The DJ? I mean, they're, yeah. I suppose they could have a different band. But either way, you're still in the same building. You're still seeing the same surroundings. So if you are, if, if it's true that millennials are looking for experiences, then I could see that could burn on them. Well, here's, it goes a little deeper here. Marketing expert Mark uh, Borowski says that the large nightclub chains were uh, faced with the challenge in creating a unique photographic experience. Social capital uh, is about bragging uh, to your friends on Instagram and Facebook, and the local nightclub uh, is struggling to cut it when there's so many other choices out there. A night at a pop-up restaurant or a secret cinema feels much more adventurous than yet another night in a nightclub. All right, now I want to know what a secret cinema is. I guess maybe I'm gonna I know, you're going to have to look that yeah. up, but that sounds cool. I guess it's uh, maybe people playing movies illegally. It, <gasps> I guess that, that could be. Um, I, I would guess um, there, I, there was an art troupe in uh, Sarasota, um, an acting troupe that would uh, do bits on the street and stuff like that. And I thought that was always quite neat to see, if, especially if you knew where they were going to be and, and that kind of thing. Secret oh. Cinema, according to Wikipedia, is an events company specializing in live cinema experiences combining film screenings with interactive performances in purpose-built sets. So, what? <laughs> so it's like a Rocky Horror, I guess? I'm not real sure what that means, but it's apparently Secret Cinema is not necessarily a thing uh, that is done by okay. a variety of people. It is a company specifically creating some sort of a yeah. It sounds event. like a Rocky Horror kind of deal where they're acting with a movie and live in front of you. Hmm. Okay. If that doesn't date me, Rocky Horror, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'll see where so there's we other here. interesting things to do. That's yeah, they're, they're they're competing with now because uh, I guess people have better things to do than just a nightclub. Um, All right. Uh, what I, oh, here was I was a night at, out at a pop up restaurant or a secret cinema feels more adventurous than yet another nightclub, which would only drain the finances needed to have a ambitious summer holiday trip. According to Cobe, nightclubbing has become for many young people a couple times a year experience, hearing that the best DJs on the best sound systems. He points out that the once costly high end audio equipment can now easily be bought and inexpensively sourced online, meaning that the house party represents a better value of your money. As indeed the experiment for, excuse me, as indeed to the entertainment offerings such as Netflix, Amazon, and uh, other game yeah, other I, game companies. One thing that uh, some of my friends would do going to the club is, is in order to save money on those really expensive drinks, they'd slide in a flask or something. <laughs> and um, I, I can't say I never did it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I mean, it was it's expensive to go to the club. I mean, you're going to yeah. be spending a lot of money. And I, you know, personally didn't have a lot of luck p- picking up, uh, you know, girlfriends and uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, if you're going to bomb clubs. out, you might we, as well just drink alone at home. We <laughs> used to drink, uh, we would get super drunk in the parking lot and then go in. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, did, we could just maintain what it. Like pre-gaming drink. is pre-gaming. what that's pre-gaming. called, yeah. Also, the pop-up restaurant is what I thought it was. I just want to clarify. These are the supper clubs we've talked about Those on Those are cool. Where uh, you go to like a chef's house, basically, or you go to someone's house who's hosting a chef. 
and then they make food for you and these other dinner clubbers, these pop-up restaurant attendees. It's completely underground. It's illegal pretty much everywhere it's done because it's not being done with governmental uh, permission slips and things like that. And so there really is actually some risk in going to one of these pop-up restaurants. So, yeah, that does sound more exciting than a night night at the club. <laughs> you get good food. You probably aren't spending too much money because the pop-up restaurant doesn't have the same overhead that a regular restaurant does. So you're probably getting very, very high-end kind of foodie-style food in a nice experience with a nice chef and, uh, and good people to talk to as well. Yeah, but there is also um, – I have been to a secret cinema kind of thing where – not not the definition you read, but where they play movies without paying all the copyright fees, and people come in and sit down really? and buy popcorn and have drinks. And they where did underground you go to one of those Savannah. They they promoted huh. it before Facebook got really popular. Um, they were using Facebook and MySpace to promote these things, and you would just show up at someone's house. Where would you go? Mainly coffee shops. They were underground, huh. and they just wouldn't pay the licensing fees. They would uh, do it and it's try awesome. not to get caught. And uh, the thing is now is I guess it's you have to figure out how to advertise that you're having this movie without their lawyers and their yeah, their web the... crawlers finding that you're having this movie because right. that's how they search for you. Yeah, you know? I imagine they do. I don't. I don't. Is is it legal to even show a movie without charging for it? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. you can show a movie um, at your house and have as many people over to watch it as you want. I okay. would. Think. Yeah, I think once you're a company, it mucks the waters. I right. wouldn't doubt it. We'll come back with more about the millennials and changing habits and the death of nightclubs. And you can share your thoughts with us here. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Everyone says or does something silly once in a while. But once that embarrassing thing is on the Internet, it can spread like a terrible rash. Put it to rest. Get a free expert analysis today from Reputation.com. It only takes 30 seconds. 800-831-0771. We protect your online image by helping to make sure that when people search for you or your business, they find the most current, accurate information possible. Reputation.com. Because word travels fast. Call for a free analysis today. 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Are you excited about the World Wide Web? Do you want a place where you can share your ideas and express yourself? Well, dial up your modems and stream on down to the GCN Live Community Forum. Lots of radical features await you there. Wow, Internet guy. I am so glad I went to the GCN Live Community Forum. You too can discover why the World Wide Web is awesome. Just go to GCNlive.com slash forum. That's GCNlive.com slash forum. I'll see you in cyberspace. Space. Friend at GCN Live on Diasora and Cross.tv. Due to an upturn in the economy, Main Street Business Loans has pre-approved the release of millions of dollars in small business funding. Your business may already be pre-approved to receive up to $250,000. We've sent out millions of pre-approval letters. We see the economy growing, and our underwriters believe now is the time to invest in your business so you can grow faster and make more money. And we're prepared to give you up to $250,000 to do it. Your funds can be available in five days. There are no application fees, no annual fees, just quick access to up to $250,000. If your business did not receive your approval letter to get up to $250,000, call Main Street Business Loans Approval Desk now. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. 800-430-4505. That's 800-430-4505. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us on the radio waves via our toll-free number. Just dial on in here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype, Skype username, LRN.FM. Are nightclubs dying where you live? Have there been some big name clubs that have been around throughout, you know, the longest time, and then all of a sudden they close their doors? Apparently that's what's happening in the U.K., where the numbers are staggering. It was, uh, I think you cited over 3,000 clubs in the U.K. in 2005, Taryn Lupo, and then you uh, cited that that number had gone down to around, what, 1,700? Yeah, 1,700, so almost half. In a decade. In In a a decade. decade. Gone down by about 50%. Yeah, that sounds like malls. I mean, it, it's malls. That, malls. Oh, yeah. yeah that that is it. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, yeah, there you go. Dude, there. Getting yeah. funky out of the house. Listen to that. If they're playing that kind of music. There we go. Yeah. Then they're going out of business. <laughs> no <laughs> way, man. I would go to that club. I love it. That was That's funky. good stuff. <laughs> it was so that was a funky. nice touch from the board operator there. <laughs> I don't deserve any credit. That was our board op. Yeah, he's smart. <laughs> you <did> that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so tell us more, uh, Taryn. Okay. Uh, the article continues. This is for, from The Independent. Yeah, for you guys just coming in, basically where I'm going to rehash for a minute. Um, they're saying that these clubs have have dive-bombed because, one, uh, social media has kind of killed it. Mm. That that you have to be hip and cool, and these uh, younger generation are kind of a super uh, short attention spans, I guess. They want to have all these experiences to post to their social media for bragging rights. They got and, their bucket list. Yeah, and their yeah. pictures of a club just, you know, it's like a one-time stop, and you never go back. It's, right. oh, I did it once. Yeah, I've been yeah. to a club. It's not like when we were young where there Every wasn't weekend. a whole lot to do and you were a club rat and mm-hmm. that's where you went every, you know, you were part of the scene. That's where I went every weekend. I mean, yes, I Where'd did. Where'd you go, bananas? Or a bar rat. Um, outer Limits. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Bananas so with the gay club I, in Sarasota. Oh, that's funny. That's right. <laughs> bananas. <laughs> what a great you name know, for Ian a was gay holding a stool down Mark there. Mark didn't even get the joke. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't. Well, thanks for... for Including us, that is He'd go a there great to, name. To have somebody push his stool up. Uh, I never went there. I couldn't even tell you where it was. <laughs> There's so much innuendo around here. All right. So um, this article is talking about that, and then now it's talking about how um, when we were younger, again, you used to go to clubs to hear a hot DJ that would come to town, mm-hmm. or you would just use it to discover new music. So it's going to talk about that. Twice a year, uh, punters aren't going to pay a nightclub's bills. I guess punters are. Party goers. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like slang in the UK. Okay. But even for the most uh, dedicated music fans, the lure of a night of house music could be reproduced by their long hours of listening to playlists on premium streaming services during daily commutes. The UK is among Spotify. I don't know if I go for that. I mean, I could listen to music on my way to, uh, uh, you know, to, way to work anytime. You can't dance in your car. No, you can't I, dance in your car. I, I, I guess I didn't go to clubs to dance, right? Mm-hmm. I went to clubs to meet women. and um, Women like guys who dance, but, though. Yeah, right? and, I would recommend that highly. Yeah. Uh, if you're a young man, learn to dance. I and, think they're more talking about that people... Right, back in the day, you guys forget that music really wasn't that accessible until about 15 years ago. I remember having to go to some underground record store to mm-hmm. find some band that, you know, you've heard once and 
and they have some used album and it was like impossible and you got some generation you know it was really hard to get weird music or discover new music and then now you can just you know they're saying oh just stream it on spotify and um well and there so are I get some that. uh you know streaming channels that have djs playing their yeah. live sets right there's there's automated sort of music box things that just play mp3s but there are also uh, DJs who will actually mix music live on streams. I mean, it's obviously oh, not the same as being cool, there, but but, but I, I but I kind of understand what the article's saying is. You know, the nightclub scene was built around that. Where oh man, you you discover a new kind of music or a new DJ, and now it's you just get it on Spotify. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so it goes on to say the UK is among Spotify's strongest markets. Uh, this guy McGrath, he's an analyst at the uh, market research company Global Wet Index says, in years gone by, you'd have to go to a nightclub at the weekend to discover music played by a top DJ. Now you can do that online via a curated playlist. So music fans have no reason to go to a nightclub. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. saying is apparently, you know, some nightclubs are all about the music. And, and that was a big, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, identity is, you know, I know where the coolest music is. Well, I know that, um, Ian, you and I have a mutual friend who used to go to, like, Europe to hear particular DJs play uh, music and, and things like that. Yeah. Now, this makes no sense to me at all, um, but, like, I would go, I, you'd be lucky to get me to drive 20 miles to hear somebody perform, Right. but I'm not a, I'm not a music guy. Uh, I'm happy to turn on the radio in the car sometime, but mostly I'm going to listen to talk radio because I want the unique content and I want to be thinking about um, issues and current events and things like that. So I, I don't entirely, I, I don't expect to understand, but some people will travel around the globe to hear the right person play. Yeah, but that's a very, very small percentage of people, I imagine. Yeah, I but I also think it's probably, you know, um, the nightclub audience is a small group of people. Well, it sounds like it's getting smaller. Yeah, I and and this is what the article is talking about. is It's changed from a hangout to an experience where the people just swing in and once a year. And if they can't get a picture. provide, if a, if a nightclub that exists today cannot provide the unique experiences that changes often enough to keep bringing people in, they're going to go under, right? Because if you want to go and drink, you can go drink at any bar. There certainly are plenty of bars around still. I I don't know if those have gone. I I have a feeling they're also having a hard time because, you know, I'll watch these shows like bar rescue or something on TV and and you just see that um, kind of across the board that unless you have some sort of really cool identity, you just die as a bar now. Hmm. Like, you have to be something special to get people to come in. I think people are just spending know. less and doing more home social media stuff. I don't see the bars shutting down here in Keene. I mean, if there's... Well, they're college. Okay. That's not a good reflection of... I mean, college towns, you could open a basement and make money. Hmm. Yeah, I you think... Um, I don't know. I mean, bars... Uh, to me, I, I'd separate bars and nightclubs, so I don't know. I, I wouldn't be able to... I can't speak to any of this. I mean, you know, yeah, I just I'm, don't do I'm this, extrapolating though. a lot about bars, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. I don't have any figures on that. But the, the nightclubs, you know, this article is pretty clear on that they are, are having a lot of problems. And I would imagine nightclubs are much more expensive to run than bars. And you're not going to see... Yeah older folks in a, in a nightclub generally, right? I mean, yeah, they're, the regulars, you know, unless they're bringing in Neil Diamond to play a, a gig or something <laughs> like that, you're just not going to see that. Hey, um, I, you're I gonna would see, go to Neil. You're going to see no, older yeah, I folks. I got, no, I got nothing wrong with Neil, but uh, I mean, I've sung his songs at karaoke. Uh, but if, you know, if, if Jacqueline Rose, if, if, you know, these nightclubs are, uh, they're attracting younger people. If they're going to attract anyone at all, once you get past a certain age, you kind of look weird being in a nightclub with a bunch of uh, younger people right. around. Right? Like if I were to go into a nightclub, I'd look like some kind of weird lurker. <laughs> and yeah. you probably would be. <laughs> right. uh, case, sure would like to well. touch those young ladies. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, I'm I mean, only 44. I can't imagine what the older, older guys are doing. It's, yeah. So the, you know, the people that are going to these nightclubs, it sounds like it's it's dwindling down as there are other things vying for their attention. Uh, their days are numbered. Were there any and, other? Yeah, points there's that more you points. To highlight? There's uh, this lady Sophia Wilkinson, news editor of Women's Lifestyle website, uh, says that nightclub bouncers are often focused on preventing drunken fights rather than the harassment of female clubbers. I think websites such as Tinder provide a safer environment for women. It's a bit easier to filter out uh, the baddies. The creeps. Yeah, the creepers, for sure. And so, I again, I think we're just going back to technology has kind of killed the uh, going to meet people in person. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier. 
And then there's a whole section on the food, that it used to be a thing to go I, well, get food at a nightclub. I would think that it's very, food at a nightclub? Yeah. Um, I, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I would think that it was uh, would be weird uh, to meet somebody like through the website. Oh, yeah, I got this app, and I thought you looked hot, so um, you know we're here, and we're going to have a cup of coffee, and we're going to chat about that. I mean, I don't um, really. I don't know. I don't know. I did Match.com back in the day when it was just getting going in yeah. like uh, the early 2000s, and it really, um, uh, you know, there's a social expectation that, hey, I want to meet a girl, they want to meet a guy. You know, after the first uh, couple back and forth, it feels pretty natural. Yeah, okay. I but, think so. I mean, I think the, probably the weirder part would be the first opening salvo, if you will. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, what what's the first thing you say to this person to get their attention, right? And because on on Tinder? Uh, no, I don't know about Tinder, but I, I imagine Tinder's Tinder. similar, right, to uh, Match. dot com yeah. or uh, OK Cupid's another one of the big ones. I know that you don't uh, offer to send them a picture of your junk. That probably uh, is a bad opener. Yeah, that's come probably on. bad. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad that's opening how it's done. system, fellas. That, it might actually work well with uh, with the gay app. What's the grinder? Grinder. The grinder. That, grinder one might, that one might, might work. <laughs> it's not really going to get me what I want. Yeah. No, you. I, I the women I talk to on dating sites uh, are just amazed at what men will do is do a shotgun where they make like a blanket letter they copy it and paste it out to every just girl just to see who responds and then yeah you send out 100 and maybe you get five responses and then you talk to those five girls it's a girls. numbers game right and i mean that yeah, makes sense but it, with any common sense you can figure out that that letter is not personal at all it doesn't talk right. about any of your interest it doesn't talk about you it just like hey i think you're pretty cool i was reading through your profile right. hey baby the first thing that you say is <laughs> probably one of the more difficult things because there are a lot of uh, ladies out there getting a bunch of people like you're talking about yeah. just hitting them up and so, so you've got to you've got to stand out from the crowd in that particular That's why I say young men learn to dance. All right, yes. more coming up yes, here yes, in yes. moments. <laughs> this is Free Talk Live, Hour 3 next. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Geico applauds your inner road name. A slow clap goes out to your biker alter ego. You might be mild-mannered Michael in the office, the guy known for raising his hand in meetings, but out on the open road, it's Motor Mike. Geico supports you and your bike, Motor Mike, because beyond cars, Geico insures motorcycles, those glorious vroom vroom machines. With 24-7 customer service and great rates, the only thing you'll be raising from now on is a heck of a good time. So head out on the highway and make that road yours, Mike. Make it yours. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.39 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,118 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $268. 
Antiwar.com reports in a unanimous vote Tuesday, the Iraq parliament has agreed to Prime Minister Haider Abadi's reform plan, which he insists will eliminate corruption of the government by eliminating sectarian quotas and a large number of high-ranking government positions, including most of his deputies. The vote effectively removes most of the remaining Sunni Arabs from Iraq's government and also some of Abadi's most powerful Shiite rivals. After the endorsement of the move by Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani, its passage was ensured and not a single member of parliament chose to vote against it. Real questions remain over how this will all work in practice, as well it eliminates set-aside posts that have encouraged a culture of political corruption. It also dramatically centralizes power under Abadi's control and eliminates most of the serious checks on his power. Instead of eliminating abuse of the power, this may simply centralize the abuse in Abadi's office. Abadi's predecessor, Nouri al-Malaki, had tried to marginalize the Sunni Arab political leadership by charging them with terrorism, but to limited effect. Abadi's move is more direct and far-reaching than this, and ironically also puts Malaki, now one of his deputies, out of a job. It is almost certain to fuel more Sunni resentment in the long run, as it consigns them to the permanent opposition with no chance of real power. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. BitcoinNotBombs.com UPI reports wind energy is cheaper than ever before in the United States and advances in turbine technology have helped make America the number one global producer of wind energy, according to a new Energy Department report. Ryan Weiser, co-author of the Energy Department's 2014 Wind Technology Market Report, said wind power's decreasing cost makes it more competitive with other energy sources, especially on the Midwestern Plains, where windy days are frequent and construction costs are often lower. The price of wind power last year was 2.35 cents per kilowatt hour, less than half of the cost in 2009 when prices peaked at 7 cents per kilowatt hour. The cost of installing wind turbines has declined and productivity has increased as the wind energy industry matures. Competition among companies like General Electric and Siemens has grown and manufacturing has become more efficient, according to Weiser. Longer blades generate more power and they're being used more wisely as the cost of production and installation goes down. Down. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports New York prison officials are investigating allegations that guards beat and abused dozens of inmates in an upstate New York prison after the daring escape of two convicted killers in June. The Department of Corrections and Community Supervision said it had been investigating for several weeks the allegations of prisoner abuse at the Clinton Correctional Center, which were first reported in the New York Times on Tuesday. The Times reported prisoners left behind in the so-called honor section of the prison, reserved for inmates with good behavior, including including Richard Matt and David Sweat before their June 6th escape, described being beaten while handcuffed, choked, and slammed against cell bars and walls. The newspaper said it had reviewed letters and conducted prison interviews. Some said their privileges were revoked and personal possessions discarded. Patrick Alexander, alleged he was targeted for abuse because he was in a cell next to Matt, described being handcuffed and taken into a broom closet where three corrections officers, whom he had never seen before, beat and choked him while interrogated interrogating him about the escape. Two prison workers had been charged in the escape of Matt and Sweat, who broke through their cell walls, cut through steel pipes, and emerged through a manhole outside the prison walls. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. From Betty Davis's first role as a piece of chocolate cake in the 1931 film Palmy Days to the discovery of Niagara Falls in 1996, The Onion looks back at This Week in History. 
On May 16, 1929, the first Academy Awards were handed out in categories such as Greatest Achievement in Blackface, Best Catholic Whipping Scene, and Most Gorgeous Gams on Abroad. The highlight of the night occurred when Wings won the award for Best Picture without a single Dago, Tar Baby, or Wetback. And on May 15, 1940, the first McDonald's opened in San Bernardino, California, back when a young Grimace was just working as a cashier. And that was what happened this week in history. As Martin Luther King Jr. once said, history is actually pretty racist. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of the program. You can join us here. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And it's not just nightclubs that are dying off. The old media is dying off as well. This is something that we've been paying attention to over the years here on Free Talk Live. The Sort of the plights of uh, newspapers, magazines, cable television, uh, even our very own radio business is, uh, is you know, it's doing okay in comparison to some of those other ones, but it, it, you know it's it's tough for the radio Wait. business to compete against all the new media in the world. Are you trying to say Blockbuster's in trouble? I didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Video rental stores. I didn't even think it. it's been so long since I've Dead. seen one. Uh, <laughs> Gone. I, actually, I'm, actually, we, we actually did have one in Keene that lasted way longer than I expected. The Blockbuster closed a few years ago, but there was actually a local video store here that called themselves Video Headquarters that just went out of business. They actually had been around for like 30 plus years. They held they, on, huh? They, man, they held on for a long time. And I guess what happened was they, uh, the the lease was coming up. It's a commercial lease, right? Those things last at least yeah, five like years. Yeah, five years. Uh, so their lease was coming up, and they finally decided that even though they seemed to be doing okay, all things considered, at least from the outside, they had a, a real like lively campaign of advertising. If you listen to the radio yeah. stations in the area, you'd constantly hear them advertising themselves. And so that's sort of an they indicator. They had a jingle. Right. That was an indicator. Love me that, a jingle. I'm a big believer. Yeah. The fact that they could afford all that advertising, I think, is an indicator that they were doing okay. But you know, they just decided that they saw the writing on the wall, I think. that they. I don't think they shut it down because it was completely dead for them. I think they saw that it, in the future, yeah, it wasn't going to work. They cashed out. And so uh, let's end this thing now while we're sort of on top. Yeah, you have to you sort of well, ask yourself, uh, you know, what I'm spending my time doing this. Am I making enough money doing it? And, um, you know, if, they, if you're not, then... Some of them survived because they would cater to the rural areas where places that couldn't get decent internet and mm -hmm. you couldn't just stream stuff, they still went out and got videos, you know, for years. I used so. uh, the video headquarters for my, basically my television service for a while. And then, you know, Amazon Prime came along uh. and it was $8 a month. Plus I got free shipping on anything from Amazon. Yeah. I decided, over. Meh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot cheaper than the video rental, uh, uh, subscription. It was interesting because for a little while, maybe right up till the end, I don't know. I hardly ever went in there myself because I just don't really watch that many movies. But uh, for a little while, they were advertising like sort of a Netflix competitor plan where instead of paying per movie that you would go and rent, you'd pay them a monthly fee and you could just go in and just swap out movies, right? So yeah. you'd, you'd, you know, you'd finish with one, you'd go in and finish it, you know, get another Wait. one. It would have been fine if you couldn't get internet. That makes a lot of sense. I don't know. Or I think that I'm so. I, I think there's something to being in a place and looking at things. It's, uh, it's there's there's still the experience. Like I that. have good memories of us getting in the car as a family, going, and going to in, the video store, and each of us got to get one videotape. Yeah, 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 they yeah. have like a deal, and you had to be kind and rewind. You and, remember back when they had the beta movies next to the VHS oh, yeah, movies man. in the eighties? Yeah. We we made the mistake. We my uh, my friend bought the beta and was <laughs> sorely angry a year later. <laughs> I so I had that uh, that program you're talking about where you could go in and switch out a movie and I at think this you could, one you at could have one or two movies out at a given time okay. and uh, I think that you know one thing that it it didn't allow for is sort of discovery of sort of new things there was some there was some discovery there there's more on Amazon than there is in that video store that's true and the cost was completely off the scale different really? it was like 30 bucks a month okay. for the subscription program it was it's 8 dollars a month for Amazon right so 
I, you know, I haven't ever, you know, gone on Amazon. I'm like, oh, there's nothing to watch. You know, I can mm. search documentary and find, um, you know, things yeah. to watch if, if I just want to get something informational. The worst thing about having Amazon or Netflix um, is no news, but you can kind of get no news. But you What's can't turn. You can't turn store? on some video. Nothing. Oh, okay. it has nothing to do with the video store. Right. Um, but you can't turn on the, the the news and just kind of let it play and. You know, that can, uh, I see what you're saying. That that's one experience I miss. And my my wife wants live sports, but you can always go to a bar and watch that. Well, of course you you, you still stream have... a lot of live sports, can't you? Or is that still mm, you have to pay blocked. for the packages? I think. Okay, I didn't know. Um, but as far as uh, the news is concerned, of course, most news stations worth their salt are putting their news packages online. So you can go to WMUR's website here in New Hampshire. That's the main ABC uh, channel and uh, and got pretty much every one of their news packages the next day. So you're not getting it usually the night of that it airs, but the next day, that like by the morning or whatever, they'll there have were, whatever was airing the previous night. There were some larger cities. When I was in Savannah, you could watch the news online. They, they streamed their, mm. their live news. So that was kind of cool if you were over... You know, you wanted to check in to see what was going on. So what we're going to talk about here is the cord cutters. So we discussed uh, the nightclubs were dying and now cord cutters. This is a thing uh, where people are doing what you're what you've talked about, Mark, like, you know, cut off that satellite TV. Who needs that crap? Yeah. Uh, who needs the, the hundred and fifty dollar a month cable subscription? I mean, how many of those channels do you actually watch anyway? Everybody knows that with the hundred and something channels, they only watch four or five of them yeah. at the at the well, most. You're mostly forced to buy them anyway, so. Well, right, but not if you cut the cord and then you just watch a la carte the stuff that you want to watch. Mostly, uh, it's the it's the sports packages that really tie people down right now. J uh, John Nolte over at Breitbart reports on the latest on the cord cutting uh, trend, the largest swindle big business ever played on the American people, forcing us to pay huge cable bills for dozens of channels we never watch is slowly coming apart. Even with an ever-increasing population, the pay TV industry, both cable and uh, satellite, lost a net 566,000 subscribers in the last quarter. <laughs> wow. When you add in quarter one of 2015... Things are a changing When you add in quarter one, so the first half of the year, that's a total of 887,000 lost customers, and I'm presuming this is in the United States. That's not being made clear here. Uh, but uh, that's almost a million customers in just six months. There's just no question that customers are getting tech savvy and budget savvy. The result is a growing wave of cord cutters. Last quarter was the second biggest drop in pay TV customers in history as people discover the beauty of streaming on budget conscious services like Netflix and Amazon that charge around 10 bucks a month. And this is, um, you know, we're talking about 2015. The recession started, I think it was 2008 or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, so people are, you know, people have a new mindset. In 2005, uh, the, the Americans spent more money than they earned. And I'm going to say that again. In 2005, Americans spent more money than they earned. Now the velocity of money is way down. And, you know, that has its advantages and its disadvantages. I can tell you businesses aren't, aren't real pleased about the velocity of money. But, um, you know, the, the average person is looking for ways to to save, to cut costs. And it's a tremendous cost cutting. Uh, you know, 10 15 years ago, I was paying $40, $45, $50 $50 for a cable bill. That must have been the cheap plan. And that was the cheap plan, um, and including um, internet. Uh, now, I, you know, obviously I'm getting internet, but I'm getting my television for basically eight bucks a month through Amazon Prime. Yep, I don't have cable either. I just can't imagine doing it. Meanwhile, for about $100 a month, pay TV is not only pummeling you with about 20 minutes of ads an hour but forcing you to pay for a ton of networks you hate. Moreover, many of these networks get a chunk of your cable bill. Even if you don't watch left-wing CNN and MSNBC, if they're on your package, chances are part of your bill is going directly to both. You can see that the author of this article has a particular <laughs> political viewpoint. Yeah. I guess that's CNN's bright. left. That's Breitbart I think for you. MSNBC is clearly left, and you know CNN, I think, is trying to be down the middle, but I don't know how much success they have. If you want to put uh, CNN, MSNBC, MTV, and all these other low-rated left-wing networks out of business, writes the author, not watching them makes absolutely no difference. You have to cut the cord. Nearly half of CNN's revenue comes from this immoral revenue stream. Well, I don't know if it's immoral. It's just 
that's the way their business works. It's the old one. Yep. CNN is taking your money to attack you all day, every day. And that is something, uh, anyway, he goes on with his sort of lefty-righty stuff. But I think it's interesting, the uh, statistics that he brought up there, that this is happening and has been happening for a long time, and it's just going to accelerate. And these come, not just, by the way, CNN and MSNBC, but Fox News is way down, too. Like, people are not interested in watching these channels anymore, these these very biased uh, channels that are sort of obviously uh, biased. <laughs> they want to go out and they want to curate their own content. Now, maybe they're getting them from biased websites like Breitbart uh, as well, but at That's least... That's what they want. You know, at least you can pick on the internet and you can support the sites that uh, are, you know, coming from the perspective that you value. And if you support Free Talk Live, you can go to amp.freetalklive.com. This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. Hi, my name is DeRay, suffering from migraines, having Botox injections in my head and neck to alleviate pain, costing $1,500 out of my pocket. I discovered Dr. Ortman and Gentle Touch Chiropractic Adjustment called Nuka. I'm migraine-free since my first adjustment. Thanks for giving me my life back, Dr. Ortman. I wish they prescribed you instead of Botox. Thanks, DeRay. Putting the bones back in place is only half of the solution. We design a nutritional supplement program the body can handle, actually absorb, providing nutrients, targeting the problem area. Between Nuka and nutrition, we will have you on the road to a faster and more permanent recovery. Look us up on the web at drwartman.com or call 952-303-9124. Let us help you feel better faster. Wellspring Spinal Care at 952-303-9124. Again, that's 952-303-9124. Or on the web at drortman.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.fm. That's LRN.fm. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project, and are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. 
While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We're back now. Free Talk Live. You can join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, we've got Skype. Skype username is lrn.fm. And I want you to know about bitcoinist.net. It is the prime online destination for information about the Bitcoin and digital currency industry. Bitcoinist.net integrates a community forum, breaking Bitcoin and digital currency news, and they cover fintech and blockchain tech news as well. Bitcoinist has sophisticated Bitcoin network statistics, a solid beginner's guide to Bitcoin, and more. The Bitcoinist platform serves the needs of everyone looking to keep up with Bitcoin and digital currencies, from beginners to experts. So whoever you are, check out Bitcoinist.net. That's Bitcoinist.net. We were talking about the death of the old media. It is a fascinating thing to watch. There was a story over at Breitbart pointing out that nearly a million people in quarter one and quarter two, almost 900,000 of them, to be more specific, have cut the cord, as it's called. They've gotten rid of cable. They've gotten rid of satellite television. Who needs it anymore? Mm. And sure, they got fancy things to try to drag you in, like the DVRs, but that's old. That's old technology at this point. And when you've got the internet as your competitor to these things, like Amazon and Netflix, for instance, uh, then it's really hard for these old media, uh, these dinosaurs, if you will, to compete because there's so much money involved in the contracts that go on behind the scenes. I don't know if you remember, there was a story a little while back about DirecTV. I think it was DirecTV or or Dish, one or the other. One of the satellite companies had gotten into, uh, I guess, hot water with Fox News, and both sides were pounding, the, you know, the pulpit and yelling mm -hmm. at each other and saying, "You bastards!" And you know, Fox News was like, "We're pulling out of here. We're not going to be on your network anymore unless you pay up." Dish TV or Direct TV or whatever, and Direct TV didn't want to pay the fees that they were asking because Fox was trying to like double their fees for some of their lesser popular channels or whatever, and that if they wanted to take the more popular channel that Fox offered, they had to take the lesser popular channels. And so there's just all kinds of these ridiculous negotiations that go on behind the scenes in this business to allow the carriage of these channels to get ultimately to the homes that they're being delivered to uh, that... That's frustrating, man. Who wants to be held hostage by the negotiating processes of these big mega corporations behind the scenes? I don't think uh, you're. I, I, it seems like if you're seeing this this many people cutting the cord, that uh, you're going to see some real changes in the uh, sort of national television distribution model. Well, there was talk. Uh, I was at the uh, the county fair here, and Direct TV had a booth. And I was talking with one of the direct TV guys, and I, of course, pointed out to him that their competitor, Dish Network, is taking Bitcoin and asked him why direct TV or when direct TV was going to start taking Bitcoin. Uh, but that as an aside, he did mention that he was hoping, and I don't know if this means it's going to happen, but he was hoping that they start offering a la carte packages, which would allow people to choose the channels uh, that they would like delivered to their home and pay, presumably, significantly less uh, for them, which would be a big change. That's an interesting way to adapt because, I mean, there are some lives, like you said, you know, you, there's a couple channels. If I could say I'll give you your 10 favorite channels for 8 bucks a month. I might consider that, you know, if it was that reasonable. I would certainly do that. <laughs> well, the other thing would be that if they went to the a la carte packages and if you could really get a few channels for 10 bucks a month or something like that, they'd have to start charging for the equipment. And so there would still be like an upfront cost, I would guess, because right now they're subsidizing the equipment, I think, because, and I, I've never installed satellite TV like this, so I don't know exactly how it works, but I suspect you get the equipment free in return for signing up for like a, a one-year time, yeah. It's right. probably possible, but you guys got to remember, you know, I lived out in the country and there's still a lot of places here that don't really have decent internet. There's still places that are just, even in New Hampshire, you drive. That's true. And so uh, the alternative is, well, I guess I got satellite TV at least, you know. And there's a lot of that. And so it's not going to go away completely. Yeah, there's still going to be a way to to keep a niche going. I think until somehow we can beam internet from the sky in an affordable way. 
keeping um, you know keep, keeping your it's these networks they have it tough i mean the dish and, and direct tv are in deep competition with each other and they would cut rate if they could they'd go down really really low mm -hmm. and they can't mm -hmm. i don't think they can because of all the the background expenses of having to right. pay fox news and cnn and the, and the all cable the companies are in the same boat they're keeping all that copper hung on Posts strung all around your town, and the well, people that maintain cable, that stuff. You know, at least have, cable's got the internet division that they can they can make money sure. from. Sure. I was going to say, I wonder if they dropped all that stuff. If, like, say, Directv did nothing but give satellite internet service, I then you could probably make. Uh, I think the companies um, that do satellite internet already it, have that kind of it corner. Is, they but work they, with them, but they have a. I don't know if you guys have ever gotten satellite uh, internet, but they give you only like five gigs, and it's slow. Oh yeah, and so you know you run out of it in what like you know ten hours of surfing you're done. Your your you your five gigs movies. is up, you so can't you can't watch. stream anything yeah. now. If you could somehow use the satellite system they already have and all these dishes all over the country and do it at a reasonable fee, you could probably bring that back to life and just get rid of the programming. Well, in um, internet service, internet's uh, satellite inter internet has its problems with sort of like uh, skyping and that sort of thing. Um, you know, there's too much latency for for that uh, for for skyping with your right. family. But um, I think you could do things like you could watch videos certainly if it was uh, better. But I you know I recently got broadband DSL um, out where I live. Mm -hmm. Before that, I had satellite internet, and it you know sometimes I'd go over my limit all the time. Right. Yeah, I remember you were, used to hate that. Uh, so are you a cord cutter? Are you one of these people who has left the old networks behind or at the very least are, you know, sort of picking what you want? Because like HBO, Showtime, these are the one of the, some of the classic reasons people would have cable television, because that was the only way to get some of the really high end uh, cable entertainment. But now HBO and Showtime have their own Internet divisions and you can go and order, you know, your Game of Thrones or whatever it is that you like to watch on these fancy uh, TV stations. You don't have to have cable anymore for that. So you can go off, and even ABC and all the major players for years have had streaming. I remember watching the show Lost, which was on for several seasons. You could just go on ABC's website and watch it there. And yeah, they'd put some inter you know, interspersed advertisements throughout the show. They'd break it up every now and then with a couple of ads. But it wasn't near as many ads as you'd watch if you actually watched them live yeah, on television. It was a lot better. Right. That's a lot yeah, better Yeah, and I'm experience. fine with that. I mean, again, I'm perfectly comfortable with advertising supporting stuff if i'm getting a show for free and they put ads in it even youtube videos i'm fine with i think that. most people are fine with that yeah i mean if i pay i expect a different you know well that's the thing it, and that's pointed out in this breitbart piece with cable you're paying and you're watching a, a boatload yeah. of advertising as yeah, well th that always seemed wrong to me right you should if you're gonna have to watch a bunch of ads then all of the channels should be delivered to you for free and I don't know if they can change their business model to in any way go to that direction, but that would be a way for them to, I mean, if if they could do it, maybe they could save their business in some way. Like you said, Mark, uh, the old uh, thing you've said about the, the daily newspapers that are also having difficulty. Lots of newspapers are shutting down completely, selling for pennies on the dollar. And you had suggested that uh, if they just went to a totally ad-supported uh, system where you didn't have to pay 75 cents for a flimsy paper that that might actually help them live. I actually told that to a reporter today um, and uh, she said we couldn't do that. Weekly newspapers do that everywhere in America but somehow dailies can't make that that jump. All right you can join us here. Our number is 855 450 free. We don't we're not just going to talk about cord cutting here. We've also got Rand Paul on deck. This is Free Talk Live. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Planning to buy food storage? Wait a minute. Many companies try to confuse you with the number of servings they sell. It's not about the number of servings, it's about the number of calories. In emergencies, calories mean survival. 
Go to ReadySupplyFoods.com for a comparison of leading companies. Ready Supply Foods sells the most calories per dollar of any company. Our 23 entrees and breakfasts are delicious and full of nutritious calories. The new leader in value and quality. Go to ReadySupplyFoods.com today. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Wednesday, gold is $8 higher at $1,117 per ounce. Silver is up $0.13 cents at $15.48 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $266 U.S. dollars. Check out our Twitter at Full Metal Liberty for twice daily metals quotes and updated market information. Or give us a call anytime at 800-874-9760. Visit us online at rrbi.co. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Keenevention.info. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Join us here on the radio. This is Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. We also have Skype. Skype on in here. Usernames LRN.FM. Joining you tonight in studio, you've got Ian. Taryn P. Lupo. And Mark. So, Mark, you went this morning to Brighton early to a very, very uh, early campaign event. 7 o'clock? 7.30? Something like that? I got that? up at 7. I was there at the, uh, I believe, at 8 o'clock. Or it's, okay. uh, no, 7.30. I thought it started earlier than Yeah, that. it was 7.30. I arrived at 7.30, yeah. Uh, so there was like some sort of uh, Rand Paul campaign breakfasty town hall. What was this thing? Yeah, it was basically a, a you know at a restaurant. Rand mm-hmm. Paul came by, uh, said a few words. There were dozens of people there. Okay, um, this is was it very, a packed house? Yeah, and some. Yeah. Um, uh, this was the you know this is this is the sort of thing that goes on here in New Hampshire when uh, a politician goes and speaks. Uh, right. on liars, camp- liars come to town and people come out and listen to them. That's that's how politicians yep. uh, politics goes here in New Hampshire. Is some you know the politicians go places and you know I, I'd heard that some of them were paying. I, I think it was Donald Trump. I heard paid people back in uh, weeks ago. Now I'm to sure show he up. You mean now I'm sure he doesn't have to. But um, yeah, I mean that I, I heard that too. 
uh, Rand Paul, I'm certain that all these people were legit. I know with the uh, the organizer that was doing the event, and she wanted people to get there very badly. I gotta gotta get people for the event, and it was fine. Everything worked out. But you never know with these events how things are gonna go. And you know, he did his uh, he got up there, did his little spiel, and and talked to um, you know talked his game. I people asked questions. Mm-hmm. Lots of questions centered around immigration seem to be a real big issue for for these folks. Oh boy! And um, you know, I mean, Z- xenophobes. What's yeah? Largely, that seemed yeah. to be what I was I was seeing. Um, but that's not my you know. I get that that's where a politician's going to come down on these issues. And Rand Paul, or excuse me, Ron Paul wasn't particularly good on that uh, that issue either. Um, he Ron Paul was a panderer, I think, on that issue. He'd pander to his audience, but when you really kind of held his feet to the flames, you could tell he was in favor of immigration. It's just that you know he was sort of saying things in a way that maybe would c- cover that up a little bit. Rand appeared to be in favor of immigration too, but he believed you had to stop the illegal immigration before you could. Great. Sort of so fix Rand all Paul's in favor of a police state, is what you're saying. Now. Uh, he, no, I'm saying that uh, you know he believes That's the only you, way you can stop. I it, understand. Right? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I I'm familiar yeah. with the issue, Ian. <laughs> um, uh, the you know, and I get it. So yeah. I asked him a question. I think this is an, an important question in front of everybody. Yeah, this okay. is a question in front of everybody. Unlike what you got to do by when you're heckling things where you go and you bother the politicians and, you know, try to, oh, I'm going to ask them hard questions and they're never going to answer it. Um, and Sometimes people, they do. People can go see your videos at uh, freekeen.com and watch uh, your abysmal success rate of getting these people to answer questions. You don't understand the point. The point of asking these questions to these politicians isn't to get them to answer the question. It's to make a video that's entertaining so people watch it and they'll see that there's activists here in New Hampshire doing activism and then they'll want to come here and join us because we're doing something special here and something that's unique. And sometimes if they actually do answer the question, it turns out to be pretty entertaining like when Rick Santorum was confronted by us a couple of uh, few years ago. So you you misunderstand the point as most people do. Uh, yeah, and most people most just of give the you critics negative like you. negative uh, comments on your videos and that's fine. Um, that's actually not true either. Uh, on anyway, YouTube? go ahead with your point. That's what I've seen. I well, see on YouTube, there are a lot of negative people on, on all kinds of videos, Mark. Okay. If you start making videos, you'll get negative comments there, That's too. true. And I, yeah, I preach wish on, I, on that. I wish I If you did. make your videos based on what the YouTube commentary, what the comment people on YouTube say, everybody will quit the making videos. So... I wish I did have a video of what I did. I just didn't even think about taking video of, no one a, was of, recording? of a town hall. Not that I know of. I mean, I wasn't paying that much attention. Was there there a bunch of old people? Mostly uh, older people. There were some yeah. younger folks. Because it's early. Yeah. I mean, it is. It, it yeah. was early. It was a, rather early. Huh. So I asked him, look, um, uh, Rand, I was a big supporter of your father. And I remember that there was a great deal of energy around uh, his campaign. A lot of people said that he was unelectable, but you know he had, uh, he had a lot of people donating, a lot of people interested. Uh, it it doesn't seem like you know the the folks that I know uh, these hardcore libertarians I prefer to use that term um, hardcore libertarians uh, they're they're the ones I know aren't ex- aren't as excited about your campaign not nearly as many as they were about your father's campaign what can we do to address that issue so you know that's I've, a good question I did the we right like mm-hmm. you know you and me Rand we're on the same side buddy and it's it's you know in a lot of ways i believe we are on the same side i believe rand paul to be the most liberty oriented candidate in the field um especially in the republican side and he's the least cancerous of all of the cancers fine How about um, that? look yeah, as long as you you and i are on the same page if that's what we're saying um i also believe that to some extent his rhetoric uh, like he has Washington rhetoric in order to get by in Washington. Ron Paul didn't really stick by the rhetoric. He had his own way of talking, and that's what made him unelectable by people's uh, Ron definitions. Paul was elected over and over again. Right, but he was unelectable from... Uh, I'm only saying what people said. Mm-hmm. He, like, he, was, he was unelectable from the standpoint of presidency. He was the most elected person running... He was a 12-time sitting yeah, congressman. Yeah. He was the most elected person running, and people would call him unelectable. Mm. I don't know why they say that. I don't know why they say it about Bernie Sanders. He's beating um, Hillary Clinton in the polls right now. But people say he's unelectable. I've never heard anybody say that about Bernie Sanders. I hear it all the time. I'd say he's uh, too old to get elected, personally. Anyway, the... um, uh, so I asked him this question. He said, I really don't, like, basically, he's like, I really don't know. 
I wish he wants to have that energy. Every politician wants to have the kind of energy that Ron Paul had yeah. during his campaign. Bernie Sanders has got it now, and it would be really awesome if Rand had it. He doesn't know, and he's like, I have the best stance, uh, most libertarian stance on foreign policy. Um, and I think he's absolutely right on that. Didn't he vote, uh, put up a bill or vote for sanctions on Iran? Uh, I don't know what all the specifics are. Like I, I, you know, you could look, you could look at those things, but yeah. you know, I think I wouldn't call that libertarian. But I think is he, it the most? No, he did not say I am a libertarian. Yeah. He said I have the the best is what the terminology was that he had. Best is a comparative uh, word, not a uh, an absolute term. I think he did the most damage to himself um, when. Ron was running in uh, 2012, and then Rand denounced his dad on Sean Hannity and threw his candidacy support behind Romney. And I think people never forgot that. Oh, my. And and if you bring that up, people are like, that never happened. And I'm like, oh, yeah, here's a YouTube video. Oh, that's horrible. People forgot that he... He threw his dad under maybe the bus that's why his and dad, went to Rodney. Maybe that's why his dad hasn't given him any money yet. <laughs> Daryl Perry was his looking- father endorses his campaign. Uh-huh. You can I mean, hasn't given him any money though. Uh, that that's talk re- is cheap. That's reported on Sean Hannity. He did that, man. I hear you. I mean, what type of backroom deal was in play on that? Like, oh, if you denounce your father, then uh, you know we'll support yeah, your run. We'll, and- we'll get you elected. Well, he has. <laughs> I, I I would agree that. Um, wouldn't you agree that Ron, Rand Paul doesn't have that unelectable feel that Ron Paul somehow did during twenty two thousand eight? I, don't know what you're I, I think Rand because Paul doesn't he's, have a chance. No, I think Rand Paul plays that uh, military vote where Ron didn't. You know, he's uh, Rand's pro-war, and Ron wasn't, and uh, that was the big thing that kept Ron out of out of getting. Uh, I, I can't tell you how many times I heard is, "Oh, I would vote for Ron, but his stance on uh, he's soft on, on terrorism and yeah. military." I, I've heard it too. Rand, my, Rand, I heard it today from my mother. <laughs> Rand parrots that where he'll play that game. Uh, he'll say that stuff. Yeah, and but but Rand's voting record is, uh, you know, you can look at it and say it's decidedly the most anti-war voting record of the Republican candidates that are running okay. out True there. Enough. And um, I trust him more on that issue than I do others. And he held it up when asked, you know, why aren't the libertarians support me? He said, um, "What supports you?" He said, first thing out of his mouth, my foreign policy is the best." And the second thing he said is, "I'm the best on security." Uh, you know the rest of them are and out there, and that's why libertarians won't support him because you're not the best as far as a libertarian perspective is concerned. He's, he is the best as he's, far as he's the best privacy. of what's running. Oh right, that's what I mean. That's well, what right. I mean. Well, as sorry, far as Republicans, right. the people libertarians who are going to win want a are running already. Yeah. You know, yeah, libertarians want a libertarian to vote for, and he's, he's not a libertarian. So of course his answer is I don't know because he's not going to change Rand well, Paul just to I you know get the libertarians to support him. Ron's, he, Ron Paul's hardline uh, you know stance of political philosophy is what ignited people to get yes, excited. Exactly. And Rand doesn't have that. He doesn't, and uh, he obviously has no plan to uh, adopt those ideas. All right, there's more coming up here. We'll talk more That's about Rand's said exactly. visit. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Well, we'll come back with it. Uh, and our number here is 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Join us in the remaining moments. Attention, business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. 
healthy, organic, fresh fish, robust, mouth-watering vegetables, all from your home. It's called aquaponics. This brilliant, self-sustaining protein and veggie system is perfect for year-round growing. Know exactly where your food is coming from. Aquaponicsource.com is the one-stop shop for all your needs. Fish, fish food, plumbing, full systems, classes, and more. Learn to build your own system. Go to aquaponicsource.com for a free guide to aquaponics. That's aquaponicsource.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. We're here to take your calls about whatever you want to discuss. Of course, we'll also bring stuff up, too, that you might find interesting. Our number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, Rand Paul was in Keene, New Hampshire today, and as has been the tradition, uh, Liberty activists in the area went out to ambush him. Uh, not all of the Liberty activists, just me and Daryl W. Perry. Uh, but we went out to uh, give an ambush interview to Mr. Rand Paul, and this was after he had gone to a town hall kind of meeting where you, Mark, were attending. You asked him a question about why it is or, or what can you do or what can you and he do to energize libertarians, people who are actually principled, who were excited by Ron Paul's principled message of liberty that he was getting out there during the 2008 and 2012 campaigns. They were excited to the point that they put tens of millions of dollars behind Ron Paul's campaign. They organized it all on their own. The and not just the tens of millions of dollars, but the time and energy to do things on their own. Right. Ron Paul didn't have to, you know, have basically have paid staff much at all because yeah. there were people that were just putting time into putting the signs Ron Paul up, blimp. making signs. Yeah. 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 It so was huge. There were so many different things. And it was essentially, it was a decentralized campaign during Ron Paul's uh those those two campaigns. And so your question to Rand was, well, you know, how can we get that level of excitement? We being you and Rand, not me, because I don't care. Uh, but uh, how can that happen? And he said he didn't know. Right. 
Yeah, basically, he didn't know, but uh, it's because he, he's not a libertarian, and he's not going to become one to re to energize those people who are energized by Ron Paul's libertarianism. Well, um, when you use the term libertarian, what you mean is is that uh, somebody is a principled libertarian uh, in the the way that you are. Um, I and Ron would say, Paul. what's that? And Ron Paul. Well, Ron Paul, no, Ron Paul. Uh, Ron Paul talked uh, violence on the border. Ron Paul was all about government in certain areas. He was Not about the really. Constitution. The Constitution is a government document. Yeah. It is a document about creating a state. When he says he's a constitutionalist, that means that he is advocating for an organization that claims a monopoly privilege of the use of violence in the area, calling itself the United States of America. You can go ahead and tell yourself that he's some kind of uh, anarcho-capitalist or volunteer or whatever term you wish to use. Uh, Ron Paul has said, I believe in voluntarism when he was on Jay Leno. Fine. So, I mean, all the evidence really is that Ron Paul is a principled, liberty-loving person, Mark, and for you to try to uh, indict him as something else, I think that, yes, there were, there were some issues that he was very careful with what he said on in a kind of a political manner, and I was critical of him for that yeah. uh, at that time. Yeah, you but, guys called him out. You yeah. didn't let him get away with this in yeah. the wiggle room and the square. But, right, but, but, the I mean, difference there's... between Ron Paul and Rand Paul is, like, vast like the Pacific Ocean. I don't Ocean. see it as vast like those Pacific Ocean. Oh, yeah, I really don't. So if Rand Paul, on a scale of 1 to 100, rate Rand Paul, uh, Ron Paul, um, as far as a uh, liberty, his Ron liberty. Paul, ninety nine. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. You know, ninety nine, ninety eight. I'm with you on that. Um, now, rate Rand Paul, because I'll bet you the Republican Liberty Caucus has a number for him too. Fifty uh, percent. What? Fifty percent? That's really. Oh, hold yeah, on. Yeah, I'm dude. like around seventy five. I'm I'm going okay. I'm going eighty five. Um, the I'm not impressed by this guy. I, I see know you're not impressed by it. issue you after have, issue. You are impressed. You said that he was the best candidate in the field. That's not an imp That's just a statement. That's it, not an. I'm not impressed by him. That's what? that's me assessing. Okay, this guy is slightly less violent. Uh, in what he's asking for the government to do than some of these other thugs. Right. He'll, That's all. He'll be the best one to win if he does win, but um, but I'd rather vote for a libertarian candidate. Yeah, I'll vote for the well, libertarian. You don't get to vote for a libertarian candidate in the Republican primary. Oh, the Guys, primary. Okay. we're talking all about right. primary elections here. The general election is more than a year away. The primary election here in New Hampshire is about six months. The primary election is, here's a little news for you, the only one that matters. The uh, the uh, the uh, Hillary Clinton is so riddled with um, scandal, she's not going to win anything. Bernie Sanders is like 75. The, the the Democrats don't have a chance. The Libertarians have never won anything. Oh, that's a ridiculous thing anything. to say. It's ridiculous and to say the Democrats don't saying, have a chance. How about this? The most important election that's going to happen in the next year is going to happen in New Hampshire, and it's going to be the Republican primary. That's the statement I'm making. That's fair. I'll okay. give you that. In that most important election... I'm going to vote for the most liberty-oriented uh -huh. person I can vote for, and I believe that person's Rand Paul. Do you agree with that statement, Ian? Uh, I wouldn't say he's liberty-oriented at the all. The most, most liberty-oriented person. A, he's the least worst cancer. Fine. That's how I see this guy. And I see so many different things that he's said and done that are not liberty-oriented in any way, shape, or form. Please stop trying to pawn him off as anything but a pale shadow of his father. Fine. The apple has fallen very, very far from this particular tree. He is pathetic in comparison to his father. That's because he you snuck want out the back door today at Lindy's <laughs> Diner <laughs> because, because he he's such a sleaze ball. He's a sleazy ball. A sleaze ball. He didn't even have the courage to walk out the front door. You know, Ron Paul would have walked out that I front door. I wouldn't have come and answered your questions either. You guys are out there. He didn't have to answer my questions, Mark. He could have walked into his uh, SUV, which was parked right out in front of Lindy's Diner. It would have taken him all of ten seconds. But no, his campaign staff came out, moved the SUV around to the back and then he walked out the back door and got in his SUV. And you SUV. didn't notice the SUV getting moved? I did notice it happening, but uh, I you know, I guess we thought Rand Paul had a little bit of integrity and that he'd have been integrity. more like his father than he would Hillary Clinton, who did the same thing here in Keene this week. She also went in the back door at the campaign event that they had for her here in Keene. Well, I'm so sorry your Rand Paul is more like the Hillary guy Clinton. Come out and, and not answer your dumb questions. Rand Paul <laughs> is more like Hillary Clinton than he is his own father. I don't know what that means. Rand Paul is a more successful political operative um, that than his means dad is. He's a liar. His dad that never means accomplished he's a scumbag. Anything in Washington D.C.
that doesn't matter to me. I don't I know care it about that. That's the, what, that's his, what I really his dad want accomplished make... was getting people to understand the ideas of liberty. Rand Paul is not that person. He's not trying to be that person. Rand Paul's trying to get elected. And so I don't care about Rand Paul, and I'm not interested in Rand Paul. I and I don't care didn't... about you libertarian types who think that he's the best choice because he's not a freedom-oriented person. I don't know he's what freedom-oriented— like, It's principle. When, when you it's say, principle. He doesn't have it. Okay, fine. He's he not principled. He's the best candidate so on So it's valueless to me. He is well, a valueless candidate to me because the only candidates that have value to me are the ones who explain the ideas of liberty to people so they can understand them and they can adopt them. You're not going to sneak it in under the radar. You're not going to fool people if that's because there's some people who believe that Rand Paul's truly a voluntarist and he's just lying so he can get elected and then— Bring liberty to the United States. That is not going to happen because, first of all, he can't do it all on his own, even if that were true. Yeah, as president, but, he could do some sta- some things, but not everything. But secondly, it's not going to happen because that's not – well, first of all, if he is a liar, I don't want to support a liar. And then even if he is a liar, You don't support him, because he, him. Doesn't, because he doesn't talk – the talk. That's what you're looking for. You're looking yeah, for a, I want a people person, to understand liberty. a mouthpiece. And that's fine. Yeah. But you were the mouthpiece, Ian. Rand Paul is not. Rand Paul is a politician. Mm-hmm. There will be a politician that takes over the presidency in January 2017. Yeah, and it's going to be a scumbag nothing that you say, any way you slice it. Nothing you say is going to change that. So, I mean, you know, that to me, I would like the best politician to take over that seat at that time. That's why I'm going to advocate for the one that's going to kill the fewest How amount of people. How much money have you given to his campaign? I, I, I refuse to designate how much money I've given, but I have given money to oh, his yeah? campaign. Oh, okay. I haven't given a dime, and I won't give a dime to I know. him because you gave he's a lot not of doing anything to Ron valuable. Paul. You really believed in him. Yeah, because Ron know Paul did valuable things like by introducing people to the ideas of liberty, many of whom and, have moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project because they found Ron Paul he, and because Ron Paul was exciting and an actual, you know, somebody worth paying attention to and listening to because he's principled and honest and actually, you know, he got also those paved messages the out. way for somebody like Rand Paul to be able to run for office. And have a chance of winning. Ron great. Paul Ron succeeded guy. in doing nothing in Washington, D.C. He never accomplished anything there. And uh, it's sad. Rand Paul was able to, you know, stop the uh, to, to, to work very hard on uh, Internet security. He's been working uh-huh. on getting uh, great. Good for him. felons their rights back and a whole bunch of other things. Doing away with minimum mandatory stuff. He's been able to. Oh, uh, Obama let some people out of prison, too. I'll tell you what. If your kid um, was killed by a uh, drone missile strike in the Middle East, you might want the most anti-war candidate out there. Mm. I'm a single issue That'll voter. That would be the libertarian, voter. not Rand Paul. Uh, Ian. You can vote for the Libertarian in November 2016. Mm -hmm. However, there's going to be an election before that, and that's the Republican primary. That's the one I'm talking about. I'll vote for Vermin Supreme. Not in the Republican primary. No, you're right. He won't be on the ballot. That's right. I'm a registered Democrat, so I'll vote See, for Vermin Supreme So your there. opinion doesn't really matter. Yeah. Sure it does. You're not even because willing I'm, to change because your— Because I'm, I want to expose Rand Paul as, as a what? dishonest uh, individual who is you know, out there— sp- Spreading these ideas that are not pro-freedom, and he's not doing anyone in the libertarian movement any good at all. He's just extracting money from those poor I'll tell suckers. You, what if, if you, um, you know, if I think many people feel like if he stopped uh, more inter- intrusion on them on the, uh, they're viewing them on the internet and uh-huh. uh, stopped possible wars, Did he, he really has that? done quite a bit. Oh, has well, he stopped the he's NSA? Part, he's, Come on. He's got nothing, dude. He's nothing. just another politician. Ron Paul just another had scumbag. And he's a coward. He slinked out the back door Ooh, just like Hillary Clinton. Just like Hillary Clinton. For a half an hour would Ron Paul have slinked out the back door? No, he wouldn't. Who knows what he would no, do? No, he wouldn't. He didn't. Who knows? That's right, because Ron Paul has integrity. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. 
So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, August 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.39 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,118 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $268. Antiwar.com reports in a unanimous vote Tuesday, the Iraq parliament has agreed to Prime Minister Haider Abadi's reform plan, which he insists will eliminate corruption of the government by eliminating sectarian quotas and a large number of high-ranking government positions, including most of his deputies. The vote effectively removes most of the remaining Sunni Arabs from Iraq's government and also some of Abadi's most powerful Shiite rivals. After the endorsement of the move by Grand Ayatollah Ali Sistani, its passage was ensured and not a single member of parliament chose to vote against it. Real questions remain over how this will all work in practice, as well it eliminates set-aside posts that have encouraged a culture of political corruption, it also dramatically centralizes power under a body's control, and eliminates most of the serious checks on his power. Instead of eliminating abuse of the power, this may simply centralize the abuse in a body's office. Abadi's predecessor, Nori al-Malaki, had tried to marginalize the Sunni Arab political leadership by charging them with terrorism, but to limited effect. Abadi's move is more direct and far-reaching than this, and ironically also puts Malaki, now one of his deputies, out of a job. It is almost certain to fuel more Sunni resentment in the long run, as it consigns them to the permanent opposition with no chance of real power. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. BitcoinNotBombs.com UPI reports wind energy is cheaper than ever before in the United States and advances in turbine technology have helped make America the number one global producer of wind energy, according to a new Energy Department report. Ryan Weiser, co-author of the Energy Department's 2014 Wind Technology Market Report, said wind power's decreasing cost makes it more competitive with other energy sources, especially on the Midwestern Plains, where windy days are frequent and construction costs are often lower. The price of wind power last year was 2.35 cents per kilowatt hour, less than half of the cost in 2019.